OVC Media Day continues. Embassy Suites Nashville. Got one of the best wide receivers in the nation, one of the finest people in the nation. One of the two representatives for Jacksonville State today, Josh yes, Pearson. Sir. Welcome back, Josh. Yes, sir. How Thank are you. you? Thank you for having me. Let's go back to May. Okay. Uh, and May is just a culminant, the award you received in May, and we'll talk a little bit about it in detail. It's kind of a culmination of your life. Uh, the Steve Hamilton Award for mm -hmm. Sportsmanship, Community Involvement inside of this conference has been a long stalwart here. Uh, I think you're one of the you're one of the youngest. It's awarded to a student athlete, but it just kind of speaks to who you are. And I want I want you to talk a little bit about that. Your community involvement back home, yes, sir. Elementary schools in and around Jacksonville. Okay, fill well, us in. Well, uh, what I do is I go to. I've been to Oxford, I've been to uh, Kitty Stone Elementary, I've been to Saxon, I've been to Pleasant Valley, I've been to Boys and Girls Club back at home, I've been to Weaver. I go to all different elementary schools, really, and just give teachers a relief, a little grace period. So I go, I just take over for about an hour, hour and a half. We go to PE, we have a snack with each other, we have recess, we go outside. Those are my three favorite. So, yeah, in a row, it's the best three things you can do right there. So <laughs> I did that, those guys, and um, basically being a mentor, being a big brother, you know, because everybody don't have anyone they can look up to. So I try to be that positive role model for them, try to bring energy, match their energy. Because when I'm around them, I'm a big kid. I like to have fun. I enjoy it. And so I do the same thing back at home. I go to Boys and Girls Club. I help them with homework and stuff like that. So I really enjoy it, though. So the Twitter handle, man, you know we got to talk about it, right? Uh, yes, baby Julio, give it baby Julio. Yes, baby give, underscore make sure Julio. I get the underscores and all yes, that, right? Sir. And yes. your and your number, right? Baby underscore Julio eleven. Eleven. Yes, all right. So tell us about the origin of that. Yeah, well, I think it's pretty obvious for a wide receiver, <laughs> but tell us about the Julio, origin of that's, that. That's my role model, man. I love okay. him. I love the way he, I love his game. I love his style. He's a big receiver. He's tall, just like I am. Fast, can move, can jump, and so I just try to learn. By him, everything he does, I try to do it as well. You know, uh, I grew up an Auburn fan, but I love watching Julio, you know, because he's a physical guy, he's a big guy, and he's going to attack that ball. No matter how many DBs you put on him, who you put on him, he's going to win that rep, and he's going to get better. So that's what I like about him. So it's okay, even if you're an Auburn fan, to admit, because <laughs> kind of Julio's the man in Alabama, yeah, oh yeah, right? Oh, yeah, yes, sir. <laughs> okay, yes, sir. all right. So tell us about the recruiting process. Uh, I mean, you've got – very close connections geographically mm -hmm. to Jacksonville yes, State. Uh, what kind of wooed you about the Gamecocks? Well, actually, man, I got in a lot of trouble. It was one year of my track year. We got some trouble. So I was talking to teams. I talked to Mississippi State. I was talking to Auburn. I talked to uh, the guys at Arkansas State, Southern Miss. I was talking to them. They never wanted to sign me. They always told me I was too little. I was too small. So coming out of high school, I was like 185. And so uh, that's when Coach Bates had, came up to me, hit me up. Now he's at Clemson. He was like, just come to Jacksonville, be a walk-on, you know. You stay at home, you won't be too far from home. So I did it. I trust the process, you know. I became ineligible, didn't play football for two, three years. And I finally got my act right together. And, and I became eligible, and now look what happened. <laughs> so this guy behind the camera, you can't see him right there, Bridges. Oh, yeah, big money. Do you like to go up against him every day? Every day, man, look, <laughs> I, I practice get crazy. it would be times we'll be out there arguing, fighting with each other. But Coach Gross asked us to be physical, but we exceed that limit. You know, we go past that limit. So, and then going against him and Traco, number 13, they know everything we do by our alignment. They can tell what play you finna run. They know all our plays. They be watching our signals. So, it's but, tough. But doesn't it in the end make you better? Because oh, that's an all OVC. Yes, yes, sir. It makes us best. All OVC, all that American. That guy right there, yeah. That's everything you need in the book right there. So, right. Yes, sir. He's a good guy, though. All right. So, this season. Coming off a great season last season, mm -hmm. just didn't get past that second yeah, round. Yeah. What's got to happen? Well, we got to change some things up. You know, we got to. Uh, we can't do what we did the last three, four years because we got to be in the second round. We just have to. We have to play every game like it's our last. We can't let no weather change us or affect us because I feel like that, that helped us out a lot. That hurt us. When we played in Maine. Maine's not cold. a wonderful place to play no, in November. No, no. I think when we got there, the highest, the high was like twenty-seven. That's the high. I ain't never. It's record breaking been no cold, cold Jackson. Like that. <laughs> yeah. So that was that was really cold, man. I think that really affected us when we saw that. But we just have to we have to not not let weather conditions change us, affect us. But we have a lot of guys that have been doing a lot of extra work. 
you know, getting better. Oh, well, just for the field. record, I've never called a game at Burgess Snow that it wasn't beautiful weather. <laughs> right. So, so I, can, yeah. I can kind of relate to what yes, you're sir. saying. It was like, whoa, that was, we a, have a, nice that was good a shot. Sun. Right. So, yes, sir. so you're going to roll out the humidity in September for Eastern Washington then? Trying to yeah, get we need, need to, right? What do you think about that, that game those, as a non-conference guys, game? I feel like that's going to be a great game. They, they are great coaches. They have great players. They're a great team. They're a powerhouse team. And, you know, OVC don't get much respect. So it's going to be a great game being able to go against those guys. Okay. So. So you and Coop and Zion, oh, yeah. y'all got a thing going, so oh, yeah. you get the ball a lot, right? <laughs> no, we don't have a thing going, man. Big ups to that. To my other receivers, they do a lot to help me get open as well. You know, Jamari, he's been there for, since our freshman year, 2015, mm -hmm. and he's a big guy, 6'7 receiver. It's going to take at least two guys to cover him. Sure. You know, he's a big body. And it just the run game, it helped, it helped me get open, so and they just find me. Okay, so we'll fill in a blank and we'll be done. We'll get to lunch. All right. <laughs> to be successful, Jacksonville State must do what this season? To move further than that second round of the playoffs. I would say we've got to be all in. We're only as strong as our weakest link. We have to be all in. It doesn't – you don't win that game that day. You win that game now in summer workouts, in fall camp, every rep, no days off, getting better. So I say all in. Because season's fun, right? Season, it's oh, season's everything fun. else leading oh, yeah. up to Every, it. Yes, sir. It's fun. So I would say all in. That's how I feel in that blank. Okay, good deal. Yes, sir. All righty. Josh Pearson, Steve Hamilton Award winner, wide receiver Jacksonville State, wants to take the Gamecocks, help take the Gamecocks deeper in the FCS playoffs. Got to get there first, but beyond that, a pretty good football team picked to finish first in the conference. More OVC Media Day after this. You didn't come here for this or to waste that. You came here to be this, to do that, to find your passion, your purpose. See, when you get here, you feel it. And when you leave, you take it all with you. This is where you get it becomes, I got it. And when you got it, that's when it really gets going. Still following? Good, because soon you'll be leading. That's why here will take you there. And there is what here is all about. Jacksonville State University, you just know. Back at Media Day, Nashville, Tennessee, the front runner, John Gross, head football coach, Jacksonville State coach. Welcome to Nashville. Uh, I think you mentioned earlier the summer's kind of gone by. Fast. Surely not. Uh, did we have May and June? I'm, I'm not sure we had those months. I think we skipped by, but it has went fast. R roll those things back through to you. Well, one of the things, uh, give us an update on, on the Jacksonville community and how it's been roughly 15, 16 months since the tornadoes. I know that would, that consumed a lot of you last summer. A little different for you here in 2019. It really was. It made last all season very unusual, you know, and I think we've recovered as well as we can to this point. Still got a lot of work to do, but, you know, uh, functionally as normal as possible. Like if you come on campus now, you wouldn't even notice we had a tornado, really. Uh, so we've recovered really good but still a lot to do you know we're gonna get some new buildings out of that deal so it's gonna be pretty nice but uh you know to put last year behind us is uh is, is really good because it was unusual all season you know for everybody and then you're leading up to football season made it you're really unique i'll let you have some fun do you wish that you could take a day off from coaching and go tailgate at jacksonville state instead of coaching I do really. I mean, they, they have a lot of fun. I know, uh, yeah, our alumni and just fans, they just have a great time. And, you know, our game days turned into a really good venue, yes. you know. So you can come in and, you know, folks are, you know, campers will start rolling in there on Tuesday and Wednesday. And, you know, they uh, get ready to set up a tailgate and everybody just has a great time. It's a festive, you know, family friendly in, environment. And I think it's why our, you know, attendance is in top five every year, you know, FCS wise. So it's a really good venue. I asked Josh Pearson kind of a similar question to that. And I said, would you just like to go to the other side of the wall of the football facilities down there? And he said, yeah, I'd, I'd like to, but i got, got some other things to work on. So while on the, on the, uh, on the subject of Josh, we just had him on. What a, what a fantastic young man, Steve Hamilton Award winner, and, and there's a reason for that. And when you get the chance to meet him like I did, it really really, really spells it out for well, you. Well, it don't take you long. It's not hard to get him to talk. He just lights the room up every time he comes in. And, you know, we've had a lot of guys that, you know, represent the Gamecock the way we want it represented, but none know better than him. You know, he just is uh, – he's so humble and uh, his personality is contagious. So when he goes out and he's a servant, I mean, he goes out 
out. He's in so many elementary schools. And if he's not in elementary school, heck, he's sweeping the, the gym basketball floor before a game or at halftime. He, he's setting chairs up. He's at the calf, you know, wiping down tables. He's just that kind of guy. And everywhere he goes, everybody falls in love with him. So he's got a kind of a contagious personality and well, well deserved him getting that award. And a playmaker for you as playmaker, well. Playmaker, no doubt. He can play football pretty good too. So, so I asked him, I said, did you kind of wink to Zarek or Zion and, and – Tommy the ball kind of thing. <laughs> he said, no, not really. But you have to like the chemistry between them because, yeah. first of all, you've got a great quarterback situation because you legitimately, in my opinion, have two starters, really. It's hard, hard, hard to find time or easy to find time for you? Well, I mean, I think that competition room makes the product really good. And I think both of them are new last year and they were running the ropes. And I think both are going to be better this year. But you got a good, healthy competition there, which ends up putting a good product on the field. But both of them can get the job done equally as well. And, you know, I, I think Coop is just, you know, going to be uh, that much better with that many games under experience. I, I really wish you wouldn't have told Josh that because now, and, you know, people go, and he only caught four or five balls. Why ain't you throwing it to him more? He's be out there winking at Coop all the time, <laughs> yeah. getting him throwing the ball. But uh, you know, feel good. Those guys have got some weapons. You know, I mean, we got a good receiver core coming back, and I think it's the deepest we've had. So, looking forward to seeing that dynamic. Marla Bridges is with you today. What a fantastic part of that secondary that's that's rock solid and perhaps one of the best in the nation. Well, you know, I look really stupid, uh, you know, the red shirt year that we red shirted him, you know, uh, you know, coach, why aren't we playing him? And I'm telling people how good he is. We red shirted him, and that's back when you couldn't play in a game, so nobody knew how good he was. Now I look like a genius. I'm glad he's yeah, at media days today. So we're glad they ain't been around a while, but uh just brings you talk to Marlin, you see the calmness calmness, confident, uh, and he leads that way. He's not a really a rah-rah guy, but he leads by example, and he's a mainstay back here in the back end. So we talked earlier, and we agreed that Twitter is real. So I saw some video <laughs> of the softball game. This is football at media day. Kind of give us a little background about that team building exercise you had last week. Well, you know, I've never been accused of being a guy that played in the box all the time. We'll, we'll go out of the box and find some unusual stuff to do. So kind of break their mind and end up a great summer, uh, find something to surprise them with, do a little fun. You never know how that deal's going to go, you know. So a bunch of football guys going to get in and play in a one-pitch softball tournament. But we did it, and uh, it went great. We've been playing about 10 minutes. I could tell, hey, this is a hit now. So it was it's a lot of fun. Were you the home plate umpire in that? Or well, no, nah, I let somebody else umpire, but uh, the winning huddle did play the coaches. That was four, so, you know, number so four, right? Huddle four played the played the coaches, and we had good food at the end. Winners got ribs, and losers got pizza, and we had some great homemade ice cream. So it was just a great day all the way around. And, and they thought they was doing full quarter workouts the whole time, so they they were excited about getting to play softball. Uh, so you loaded the Gamecock Express, right? I and think you were did. telling me about that earlier. Well, we you hotted around yeah. the corner of the stadium? Yeah. Or yeah. We had around the corner and we okay. said, right, look, guys, we got all warmed up. It's last full quarter of the summer. It's going to be heck now. This is going to be hard. So was, we warmed up for 10 minutes, and they're thinking they, we're fixing to half kill them. And we said, go get on the bus. We're going to play softball and eat some ice cream. So they were uh, they were fired up. <laughs> and no gloves. No gloves. We played with a soft core softball, and it worked out pretty good. And you said some of the young men hit it out of the park. Oh, they did. Which they, is most difficult to yeah, do with did. those – Modified Definitely. Softballs. We had five fields, so the games moved fast. But, uh, you know, it was a one-pitch tournament, so you got some guys that played baseball in high school thought up here they was going to jack the ball out of there and they'd strike out or, you know, hit a foul ball, which was an out. So it was uh, it was pretty unique. And then we had some guys who really could hit it and did hit some home runs. This is a lot of fun. All right, I'm jumping back around here. You picked, finished first in this conference. Does that surprise you? What have you got to do to be successful? Well, I mean, I, I think uh, it's where we want to finish. We always say that. I, I think, uh, you know, Bulldogs eyes, you know, we're used to that being on our back. And I think uh, you take the four, top four teams that got picked the top four, any of the bottom teams can beat any one of us four on a given Saturday. you got to play the very last play in OVC to have a chance to win. You better play your A game. So I, I think it's where we want to finish part of, you know, wanting to win a national championship, so you got to win OVC. So it's where we want to finish. But this team is responsible for its own destiny, so we'll see how it goes. Can this team go further than last season's team did 
into the third round of the playoffs? I think so. I mean, I, I think we got the capability of doing that. Now, how we progress through the year is, is up to this team and how we work every day and, you know, how healthy we stay. All those things has got to fall into place. And uh, when you make a run at it, everything's got to fall right. But this team definitely has more experience back. We were so young last year. So, you know, we got some pieces in place that definitely we can make a run at it. Okay, so Josh said it was really cold in Maine last year. <laughs> How cold was it? It was really cold. I, I don't think our guys could get over. Uh, there was uh, four foot of snow off to the side of the field. You know, oh boys from Alabama, that was uh, that was kind of that was kind of tough. Some of them never seen snow like that. So it was it definitely played a sure. mental psyche on us and uh, did come into play in the game. Gonna work hard to get that home game again. No right? doubt, go and defeat it. Right, that's the reason why to get home field advantage yeah, for sure. It is, and it was definitely for the Black Bears of Maine. Coach, thanks for joining us. We appreciate. Appreciate it. Best of luck to you. We'll see you at least, I believe, three times oh, awesome. during the ESPN3 schedule. Uh, enjoy the hospitality of Burgess Snow all the time. Uh, you know, Greg allows us to have some ice cream over in the main area, and then he sends us to the other side there of the building go. just to let you know. So there we'll, you go. We'll, we'll get to work on that. There you <laughs> go. You're, you're the least bit worried about that, but <laughs> us in media, we are. So, John Gross, right. head coach, Jacksonville State, our thanks for him joining us. And uh, Gamecocks picked a finish first in this conference. We'll see how it plays out. OVC Media Day from Nashville. A smile, such a simple gesture, an effortless contraction of muscles, a flash of teeth. Healthy smiles have the power to spread joy, courage, and love. When you smile, it transforms you and the world around you. So if you feel the urge, go ahead and use that simple gesture to spread joy. Keep your smile healthy and strong. Choose Delta Dental, protecting more smiles than anyone. Welcome back to OVC Media Day, Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, we got one of the best middle linebackers in all of the country with us, Zach Hall, big number five. Sir, Southeast glad, Missouri. Glad to be here. Hey, how much fun was last season? It was a great time. Um, you know, first taste of winning we've gotten since I've been at SEMO. So, you know, we're looking for more of that. And, you know, it was just a great time going out there every Saturday. So I watched your highlight reel. We talked about this earlier, but I wanted to talk to the fans to watch a highlight reel. And a highlight reel is what it is, right? Mm -hmm. But the thing that jumped out at me is different opponent as part of that and you seem to be dominating in a lot of games back to back to back. How much fun was that? Uh, it's a great time. I just love to compete, you know, go out there, give it my all for my brothers, and I think, you know, that attributes to most of it. So when you're in the regular classroom and in the football classroom, you're studying that tape, you're looking for tendencies, you're looking for trends, formations, and then when it happens right in front of you from that middle linebacker position on a Saturday, how much fun is that? Like. I know where this is going. How oh, much yeah. fun is that? It When you do your research and, you know, you do your film study and all that and you see it start to add up, then you know it's going to be a good Saturday, a good game. So how does that – that's a that's a momentum of its own, right? You cannot wait to get in the into the football game room uh, on Sunday and get ready for the following week. And, and it, it, it's like, okay, this worked because I did it this way. So I'm not going to quit doing that, right? A little superstition yeah. too, right? Yeah, it's, it's a whole other game in itself. You know, Monday through Friday, you're you're looking at film. You're watching film, trying to pick up on different things, you know, asking around, asking your teammates if they've seen certain things, and, you know, trying to relay that back to how the game's going to be played on Saturday. And we need to mention that Zach is a Buck Buchanan Award winner, the from 2018. Talk about that experience. That That is one of the most treasured awards in all of FCS. Yeah, it was, a, it was a great experience going down to Frisco, seeing the national championship game and stuff like that. Uh, I wouldn't have made it if I didn't have the other 10 guys on the field with me. You know, they make my job a lot easier when I can trust them and know what they're doing. Okay, so I asked you earlier, but I want to ask you again. Number five, middle linebacker. That's one of the things I like about college football. Talk a little bit about that path. I understand that's been your number for a while. Yeah, it's been my number since Little League. Uh, my, my mother wore it. And so did my older brother, so they're my two role models. So I decided what better way to show out for them than wear their number. So last season, tremendous success, second round of the playoffs. 
although personnel and the people, teammates change just because of graduation and situation of that nature, how do you build upon that this year? Uh, how, how do you instill in someone that might be new to campus or even the older guys that have been around a while is like, yeah, we had some success last year. Yeah, we had some, but not enough. You know, we're, we're a very hungry team right now. Uh, this, it's been a long winter and a long summer. You know, we're just looking forward to getting back out there and competing because we're we feel like we're putting in the work. So we're looking forward to it. Okay, so a middle linebacker number five gets a touchdown at Tennessee Tech last season. Take us through that. Um, it was actually an option play of quarterback rolling out right. Uh, Justin Swift, outside linebacker, forces him to pitch it a little early than expected. Uh, running back. He doesn't see the ball coming, goes right past him, and it's a one-on-one -on -one in the end zone. Fight for the ball and came out with it. Did you think you were going to get it? I knew I was. At that point, you were there. There was no choice. <laughs> you know, Zach, in seasons past leading up to 18, you know, the SEMO defense, that was where it needed to be. That was where it needed to be to keep you in football games, keep the team in games. But then the offensive element with Daniel Santa Catamaria, that's really changed things on campus. Oh yeah, he's a he's a leader. He's a winner. You know, he wants to go out there and he wants to put on for his teammates and pass the ball around. Maybe run the ball a couple of times, but he's gonna do whatever it takes to win. Okay, give your recruiting pitch. I'm Zach Hall, middle linebacker, Southeast Missouri. I've had tremendous success in Cape Girardeau. What are you telling young men that might be considering playing football in Cape? Um, anybody who comes through Cape to to even look for a visit, I just tell them it's a family. You know, you come. And we've we built a lot. It took a lot, a lot of hard work and a lot of time and a lot of patience. But what we've built is something where family is really important. And that's the main thing about it is, you know, no matter how good the football team or how bad they may be, we're going to be a family at the end of the day. So number five coming into a defensive backfield near you, right? Offensive backfield rather near you, right? Yeah, hopefully. All right. Buck Buchanan Award winner, Zach Hall, middle linebacker, Southeast Missouri, joining us. Back with the head coach, they call him Took. We'll see if he's got his boots on this year. Back after this, OVC Media Day. I will be a star. I will be an entrepreneur. I will build your home. I will teach a child. I will grow the world's food. I will help those in need. I will protect you from danger. I will save lives. I will. I will. I will. I will because of Southeast. Because of Southeast Missouri State University. Coming off the best season in Southeast Missouri football, we got the head guy, Tom Matukowicz. Coach, good to see you again. Welcome to Nashville. What a difference a year makes. Huh? It does. And I tell you, one of the things uh, and I talked with uh, with Zach about this as well, uh, you know, in your first couple of seasons, defense, solid, solid, and you just needed that offensive piece, and I think you may have found it in your transfer quarterback. Yeah, absolutely. It's just uh, nowadays you have to be great at the quarterback. Everybody can take something from you, and if you don't have a quarterback, you're going to uh, struggle. And so he's gave us – and to be honest, I think the thing that he really gave this football team is belief. We now all believe that we had the guy – and we knew we were going to win football games. A word or two about Zach Hall. We just visited with him. What a fantastic football player. Uh, as I told him, highlight reels are what they are, right? You're not going to show a missed tackle or, or something of that nature. But just to see the consistency of him throughout the season. There was a different opponent that I saw a highlight reel of throughout that piece. I thought that was really, really key. Yeah, he just consistently brought it each and every game. And the guy just processes the game different than everybody else. He's got a Pentium 5000 processor. I mean, he could see it and get there before someone can block him, and it, it's what makes him great. Yeah, that's a great point, too, because you, when you look at the, some of those highlight reels, especially when they're shot from the end zone, he's in position in that middle linebacker position, and the flow may be going one direction or another, but he's consistent as to – I've, I've read this, I've prepped for this, this is where I'm going to go, and that's a big part of it. No doubt. And just the, the game-changing type plays, you know, whether he sacks interceptions or strip the ball, um, I remember a huge, huge safety he made against Jacksonville State uh, to, to knock them off, and, you know, that's him. He just makes those game-changing plays. Let's talk about what it was like 
Uh, let's, let's go back to the second last game of the season. A wild one against Murray State. Uh, had a big lead, you blew it. You came back, you give up the uh, kick return for the touchdown on a, on a squib kick, intended not to be returned well. It, it was. Hats off to Murray State. What was it like from that point with your staff and your team to the next week and then the win over Eastern Illinois and then the wait for the playoff bid? It's just uh, the dichotomy of life, man. That's just kind of how it works. You know, just about the time you figure you got everything uh, situated, you get a curveball, and, and really uh, it's, it's with our program. It's all about how you respond. Fill in a blank, play this with Zach. want to play it with you. Best season ever coming off for Southeast Missouri football. What's next for you? What needs to happen? Well, the bottom line is we've never had back-to-back -back winning seasons. And, and right now we just had a good year, but I want a program, and you can't have a program without consistency. And so we got to find a way to have a winning record. And these seniors, if they win four games, will go out the winningest class in program history, and, and that's what it's all about. Okay, so we get started here in a few weeks. What's the regime like from when you leave here in Nashville? Get back to Cape. I know it's back to work. Kind of take me through that next four to five weeks. Well, it's just an exciting time. I mean, it's just like the players, they work really, really hard just to get the pads on. When we work extremely hard all summer, we're not even doing anything with football. And so that's what it's all about is, is getting a bunch of people in a room and, and figuring out who this team's going to be. You know, last year ain't going to help this year. In fact, it'll make it harder, and um, it's going to be fun. You know, if this winning and losing one in the end, this would be really fun. <laughs> it gets a little stressful towards game time, but uh, it, it's actually a lot of fun putting teams together. Well, you've done a great job of that in your time in Cape and uh, looking forward to a fantastic season now. Tom Matukowicz, his team in the playoffs last season, got to the second round as well. They want to get there and much more. More visits throughout coaches in the OVC coming up after this. It's Media Days. Hey, Dad, got a quarter? Sure. <clears throat> I see an unstable skateboard and a long, long recovery. Helmet. You are one expensive kid. I'm next. Wait, I see a lady. Lady? Wearing a red coat. You can't predict the future, but you can prepare for it. With affordable individual and family plans, call Farm Bureau Health Plans. We've got you covered. We're about to find out what a super back is, because we're about to meet James Sheehan from Eastern Illinois, who, uh, oh gosh, I, it, it has been a long day. James, great. To, <laughs> welcome to the set. Great to have you here in Nashville. Yeah, uh, for transition. It's been a lot for you over, I mean, offensive coordinators, uh, head coaches. Talk a little bit about what the last three seasons have been like for you. Their change is just an understatement when we talk about that. Yeah, I mean, it really is. Um, you know, the coaches uh, from the past, obviously, they uh, very close with them, um, built, you know, really good relationships with those guys. Um, they've taught me a lot, you know, a lot on the field, a lot off the field, but um, you know, with Coach Cushing and his staff stepping in January 1st, you know, we really felt the whole program take a shift for the better. Um, you know, he's done a great job instilling leadership in a lot of our players and encouraging us to, you know, take in other players. And really, I feel we're uh, taking the right step forward um, and just looking forward to a good year. So. I read this story about the super back is what I was talking about because traditionally you've had TE behind your yeah. name and your title. Uh, yeah, that's that's technical. That's you know Associated Press word yeah. style, but it really didn't really define your role in seasons past. No, it really didn't. So what I like to think of the super back is kind of a, a position, kind of like a jack of all trades, really. So. Um, when you think of a traditional tight end, you think of, you know, hand in the dirt for basically every single snap. So a super back, um, basically, uh, I'll, I'll get split out in the slot. I'll be off, off tackle, um, on the ball. Um, me personally, I won't be doing too much in the backfield next to the quarterback, but it's almost like an H-back position. Um, you know, someone who can specialize in blocking, who can get pretty physical with blocking, but also run a route and make a big catch on third down. That's kind of how I like to think of the Superbag. So a lot of changeover. Uh, 
by the way, Isaiah Johnson, a, a friend of mine, a friend of my family okay, from great. here in Middle yeah. Tennessee. Awesome. Fantastic career for you. Quarterback changes for you. Are, are you are you to a point where you think you've kind of found your way through this thing and now let's get to camp and let's really refine it? Or do you still think like there's still some missing pieces that you just don't quite have a grip on? Um, well, we're going to have, you know, young guys have to, you know, step into some big, big roles this season. And I mean, that's not a problem. Um, you know, they're as long as they mature quickly and uh, hit the ground running, then that won't be a problem. Uh, for the quarterback position, you know, we got we got plenty of talent at that spot, and I don't see that being a problem. Um, last year it was Brantley and Woodbury who kind of mm -hmm. split, um, you know, split the load, and both of those guys, you know, they have their unique talents, and uh, you know, moving forward, there's a I think that we have a lot of weapons on offense, and then our defense could get pretty nasty this year. So uh, I, I think that um, we should be pretty set at, at all positions. Yeah. Let's talk about the team. Again, a lot of them experienced what you've w been through with changes in coordinators, changing in head coaches. Mm -hmm. uh, if there ever is a point in time where you say, okay, we've settled in, have you reached that? Do you think you've reached that as a, as a group of players? Oh, yes, for sure. Um, you know, like I said, Coach Cushing got here January 1st, and um, really the whole team is bought in. We're all invested. So you really see it. You really see a difference, um, you know, in our lifts and our meetings. Everybody's locked in and focused. Um, our practices. Everybody's bought into the culture, the scheme. Um, yeah, you, pretty much all of our players are, you know, locked into what our coaches are preaching, and everybody's on ship. So. Okay, the schedule. Classic. Okay. It is what it is, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you you enjoy this conference? Is there, is there some place you look at that schedule and say, oh. <laughs> Um, I love the OVC. I think the greatest thing about the Ohio Valley is the parody. You know, every single week when you game plan, you know, you can't take, it's not like high school ball where when you know, you know, the score is going to be 60 to zero. Um, you know, each week you game plan, um, and, and you know, you respect all, but you fear none. So, um, that's what I really like. If there's one team in particular, um, obviously Jacksonville State does have the, you know, they, they would have the target on their back rightfully so um but like i mentioned i th i, I kind of see all my opponents as the same james sheehan the super back i don't know how we i don't know how we put an acronym for that in the lineup but we'll get it thanks to him for joining us his new head coach adam cushing up next obc media day continues from nashville you can reach heights you never thought possible in the right place with the right people supporting you and right opportunities open to you, you can grow like never before and propel yourself to boundless possibilities. It's that simple. It's that life-changing. At Eastern Illinois University, we're all in for your success. Let's do this together. Adam Cushing has left upstate Illinois to come to Charleston, Illinois. He's a new head football coach at Eastern Illinois. Coach, welcome to Nashville for your first OVC Media Day. Thanks. All right, so uh, palatial setting in Evingston, new facility, a lot going on at Northwestern. What interests you in this job? Well, the, the, the tradition, first and foremost, uh, I'm an Illinois guy, born and raised in the south side of Chicago, and, and growing up following names like Romo and, and knowing about Garoppolo and Coach Spoo and Yurkovic and all those names that have had tremendous success, and then knowing what they've always been, right? Always been able to follow Eastern Illinois and top five all-time playoff appearances. Um, so you talk about tradition first, and, and, and it's a place um, that's growing, and it's a place that, um, that the new president Dr. Glassman and, and the athletic director Tom Michael have done such a great job to to really um, point us in the right direction uh, that there's there's a lot of positives happening right now in Charleston. Is that resonating is that message of the history of Eastern Illinois football is that resonating with the recruits you're talking to? Absolutely you walk in our, our football stadium and in in our coaches offices and you see pictures of Mike Shanahan and Sean Payton and Tony Romo and Jimmy Garoppolo and Kamo Gruje Hill and uh, Ryan Pace and you know the, the names can keep on going so it's pretty impressive to walk into and uh, and 
people want to be around a winner in the, a place that knows how to do it. Yeah, no doubt about that. And the wind always blows there. When you're <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so let's so let's talk about personnel. When you came in to this job, uh, you, get, you got some quarterback situations you got to solve. You've got kicking game, which departed. You talk about a, a fantastic kicking game that that, that uh, and some key elements of defense. So let's start with the offense. What's your what's your philosophy offensively? What can we expect from Eastern Illinois? Well, we're gonna we're gonna adhere to the philosophy: players, formations, and plays. We're going to figure out what our best players do and put them in position to, success, to be successful. So if whoever our best players are, we're going to figure out through preseason camp, and then we're going to figure out what they do best. And that's how we're going to structure our offense. We're not going to be rigid and, and force a, a square peg into a round hole. We're going to say if this is the best football player because – we can make the best call in the world, but there's always an answer for scheme. We can have the best protection in the world, but there's a pressure that, that, that can get to home. We can have the best defense in the world, but there's a, there's a scheme that blocks it up. Um, but there's not an answer for a great player. And when you put the, the players in position to succeed, you have a chance. And defensively, uh, you've got some holes to fill there as well. A lot of longtime starters uh, graduating. Same, same on the defensive side. Maybe a little quicker, faster, bigger. What's your philosophy there? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's still about players, right? And so it's about getting the guys in the right position to to succeed. Maybe moving a guy here or there to to be a little bit faster at that position. It's getting the best football players on the field. It doesn't have to be you know X number of D linemen or X number of linebackers or X number of safeties. It's just let's put our best guys out there and let them go make plays. So in doing that, there has been some changes as I was talking to uh, uh, to James about in terms of terminology and with that and that that all of that comes into play later on. And that we'll leave that on the coach speak side. But I'm really <laughs> curious when you were hired, what was the time frame you gave yourself? I got to get this staff together. I got to start working the phones. Kind of take me through that process. Well, fortunately, I've, I've spent my career around great people and had great young coaches pass through place that I, that I was for so long. And so um, as I got uh, approached and had some conversations, I was able to get a few people in line that, uh, that if it was going to happen and fall the right way for me, that, that uh, we had some guys already willing to be on board. And then, uh, and then of the 11 guys I hired, eight of them had spent time with me at one point or another, right? So those, the next group of guys was pretty easy to get to also. So, um, but that was the first thing I wanted to do was get the staff in place and, and allow the team to, to know that, that we're going to put great people around them. And then certainly, you know, you can't win many games without recruiting well. So we had to get the staff to work recruiting. Yeah, last question. We touched a little bit about on tradition, which – rock solid in place at Eastern Illinois. One of the things I talked about when I talked to some of my colleagues was is they said Adam Cushing is changing the culture there. How do you how do you as a head coach impact that? What's your impression on how to go about that? Well it's it's a daily basis. You have to pay attention to all the details on a daily basis and truly make sure that the focus is always where it needs to be. Because it's easy through a three hundred and sixty five day a year to to stray a little bit or to, you know, if you're a young man to, to maybe have your mind be thinking about that test tomorrow or, or boy, this, you know, this lift is going to be great, but what about, you know, later on today or whatever that is, is just focusing on sacrificing for one another, really the team concept and paying attention to it and always pounding the same message over and over again. So you're looking forward to this opportunity, no doubt. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Now, let's start early. We'll have Eastern <coughs> Illinois in our ESPN3 broadcast when UT Martin comes on September 28th. There's allegedly a special guest going to be in town that weekend too. We'll we'll hold off we'll hold off on a full reveal on that. That's Fair right. enough, coach. That's a good idea. <laughs> Pending travel. <laughs> Pending travel. Adam Cushing, first time uh, here at OVC Media Day with us. We want to say thanks to him. And more interviews to come up next. We're live from Nashville. We are more than just athletes. We inspire scholars. We inspire leaders. We inspire champions. We inspire family. This is the Ohio Valley Conference.
Got a Nashville flavor coming up in Nashville, Tennessee State University, not too far from where we are here at Embassy Suites. Chris Rowland, wide receiver, return specialist, specialist, jack of all trades. Uh, a lot of responsibilities for you inside of this uh, Tennessee State team this season. We'll talk a little bit about last season before we get to that as well. We talked off camera, just a little bit of up and down. Fantastic start against Bethune Cookman. Uh, and you got banged up a little bit. Kind of take us through last season. Last season, you know, it started off great. You know, you always want to come in the season and be positive. But, you know, as you know, the season goes on. It's a long season. Stuff happens. Injuries happens. And that's been one of our biggest peeves, you know, just being healthy as a team. And, you know, injuries happen. You know, I got injured in the fourth game, the EIU game. So, you know, you really can't help everything that happens, but you just got to, you know, keep a positive look and just keep trucking. So. All right, let's talk about this brother rivalry going on. Kind of tell us a little bit about this. Brother rivalry? Yeah. Who, you talking about oh, one that the media creates, right? <laughs> yeah, they create. There is no rivalry. There is no rivalry between me and my brother. It's all love. You know, we're always positive towards each other. We always, you know, gonna encourage each other no matter what happens. So, you know, there is no rivalry. Okay, so you're a Nashville guy. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about your high school career here, because I think it's real important to know that uh, what you accomplished in high school, because it bears repeating. All right, I'm a uh, like you said, I'm a local kid. I went to Ravenwood High School down the street. Um, I was part of the 2015 state championship class, and me and my brother, you know, he also played with me at Ravenwood, and you know, we have a lot of history with Ravenwood. Our older brother went there, and you know, that like I said, my high school career has a lot of buzz to it. You know, um, I received for over a thousand yards, rushed for over 800, coming out of high school. So I had a lot of you know clout, I guess you could say, coming out, but. It's exciting being from Ravenwood and being a local kid and able to stay in Nashville. So Coach Reed's about 15 feet from me. He's expecting the same results out of you this season as that senior season, right? Absolutely. I'm, I'm expecting those results. You know, you always want to have a great season, but the goal coming into this season is just to win. That's all I want to do is win. And, you know, if you try to win and focus more on that, I feel like the statistics are going to take care of itself instead of just focusing mainly on that. So I'm going to warm Coach Reed up because he's in the shadows, but I'm going to ask him the same question. But how frustrating was last season – to lose two games to weather. That, that's, that's such an anomaly. Like you said, it's something you can't help. It was very frustrating, you know, especially, you know, with the season we had, you know, finishing the record we did, you know, you want to go ahead and chop those up as losses. That, that kind of hurt our chances more. And, you know, it was out of our hands. You know, you can't do much about that. But, you know, we're having a positive outlook coming into the season. And, you know, I'm just praying, you know, that doesn't happen again. No hurricane, none of that on the East Coast. That's why we didn't schedule no games on the East Coast this year, <laughs> anywhere near water. So, you know, I'm excited yeah. coming in and just hope that doesn't happen again. So the Christian Abercrombie story is just phenomenal. Talk a little bit about kind of where you were that night and, and the, the days, weeks, and now months afterwards. <clears throat> the Christian Abercrombie uh, experience, I would say that wasn't – it was – a roller coaster, I would say. You know, after he had gotten hurt, um, I, would, I don't want to say our season went downhill, but it did affect all the players and stuff. You know, guys weren't as enthusiastic as, you know, we should be because when you lose, you know, the leader of your defense, that, that kind of takes a toll on guys, you know, and we had to have guys come in that were less experienced. You know, younger guys, they, they stepped, they filled in great. They stepped up. Uh, Jay Sean Bryant, he was the mm -hmm. guy that stepped in for AB. He did a great job throughout the season. But when you lose your, you know, your guy, your leader, it just hasn't uh, – a different effect. The practices were different. The intensity just kind of dropped off, and you know, just AB being in the hospital, and you know, and being in a coma like he was. You know, guys' heads weren't in it. You know, we kind of lost our focus a bit. You know, guys staying at the hospital all night wanting to be there. You know, we had to get back to school. So it was that was a tough night. I remember, um, you know, I was real emotional that night. We had the we had a prayer for him at the uh, courts. Everybody was up late at night just crying after that game, and it was tough to talk about it. So. Okay, so this season. Play a little fill in the blank, but kind of been doing it with some of your colleagues throughout the. For Tennessee State to be successful, blank must happen. Hmm. For Tennessee State to be successful, I feel like everybody, all our players, that we, I feel like we accomplished this offseason, everybody has to be together. There has to be no I. It has, you know what I'm saying? There's no I in True. team. Everybody has to be together. And I feel like this offseason, we've implemented that. You know, everybody, there's more camaraderie. And, you know, everybody. Is focused on winning instead of more of you know me me me. So that has been the like the main focus that's coming in. So I feel like the team being together that's gonna be it's gonna take the win. Okay, so I never had the guts to do it, but to return punts. <laughs> <laughs> to talk to me about that. I mean, no one you know likes to return punts, but you know I just they, I was it was just not it came natural to me returning punts and you know having quick movement. Like I feel like that playing that position fits me you know best. Being able to catch the ball and just make something happen off the run. 
So nothing but a really it's nothing but a quick twitch, but you know, it is a tough job to do and I take, you know, full responsibility when it comes to punts. I take pride in catching punts and that's something I focus a lot too on the off season, you know, many people, you know, they kinda question me, like, you practice catching punts? I'm like, Yeah, I, I practice everything, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> Especially now as an All-American punt returner, so I, I really do take pride in special teams because, you know, special teams is talked about a lot, especially with um, Coach Reed. He emphasizes special teams a whole bunch, so I take pride in it as well as he does too. So. Good luck to you this season, Chris Thank Rowland. You. Ravenwood High School here, here in Nashville and Tennessee State here in Nashville as well. Coach Rod Reed, the Tennessee State alum, coming up next, OVC Media Day. Excellence resonates throughout our campus at Tennessee State University and inspires our students to make new discoveries. They commit to learning and achieving at any age and dedicate themselves to serving others. Excellence is our habit at Tennessee State University. Coaching at his alma mater, Rod Reed, Tennessee State University, joins us. Coach, glad to have you here. Uh, I say here, it's almost like I'm inviting you to Nashville, but you're a Nashville icon almost. Oh, glad to be here. Uh, you know, it's football time, so uh, anytime, you know, we start uh, this time of the year, OVC Media Days, unless you know that it's right around the corner. Okay, uh, let's go back to a most difficult season for you, undoubtedly. Mm -hmm. uh, we just talked to Chris about losing two games to weather, which is just almost unheard of uh, with Christian, all of that, just the most difficult 2018 season. How quickly do you want to put that in the back and or how quickly do you want to try and find some elements to build off of it? Immediately. Uh, you know, you, you uh, a season like we had last year is unprecedented. You can't, uh, you, you know, you couldn't write that in the script, uh, so to speak. Yeah. You know, losing two games of weather, having your best defensive player go down uh, with a, a life-threatening injury and uh, the recovery process that that took, not only with him and his family, but with our team uh, and things of that nature. So uh, it was a difficult season. But uh, I think our kids have done a really good job in the offseason, had an outstanding summer, uh, and it's going to be a bounce-back year for us. Uh, you made one comment at the end of the season last season the UT Martin uh, game he said we we're talent rich and loaded for 2019 get a little more specific about well, that I, I just think that a lot of guys that we lost to injury we'll have those guys back um, you know we'll, we'll probably have the most seniors that we've had in a while and we got a lot of guys that had to were forced into action last year they got some valuable game experience, game experience so uh, we've got a lot of talent back on the field, and I feel really good about it. All right, it all starts at quarterback. You tried a lot of different combinations. A lot of players played quarterback last season for you as well. Is there a front runner coming in here uh, through summer and fall camp? You know, it's we're going to leave it a competition. You got Demery, you got Michael Hughes, and uh, Cam Rosendahl had a great spring. Yes, he did. And uh, so uh, we're excited to see where that competition goes. But uh, I'm not going to name a front runner right now because those guys got to compete, and it's uh, what you do. Uh, every day in practice and how you approach the game. And uh, it's going to be who can protect the football the best, you know, that we think during camp and, and uh, who's uh, mentally prepared to run the team. Defensively, uh, obviously had some losses there as well, but I think you appear to have filled those holes and I think you're pretty positive about the defensive side as well. Yeah, defensively, uh, we were able to beef, beef up the defensive line a little bit. We got to transfer uh, Alan Daniel in from Purdue, Mike Boykin uh, from Louisville, but you know Khalil Jones, uh, uh, Cole Pepper, Andrews, and uh, Andrews Cole Pepper, uh, uh, and, and those guys that have been there, um, Jeremiah Kane. Uh, on the inside, we feel really good about those guys. And then Dante Ferguson, the guy that's here with us today, he's a guy that's emerged as a leader on our defense. Uh, played some really solid football at the end of the year last year. And Makai Brown on anchor the front. Um, you know, he's bulked up a little bit, uh, had a great offseason. So we're excited about our front four and those young guys back at linebacker, Terry Strader and uh, Deshaun Bryant. You know, they were forced into some early action last year. Lots of time. Uh, yeah, and, and they got some va valuable experience and they played well. So uh, we're really excited about that. 
Talk about I, I kind of ask you this season after season, but it's really I think relevant to Tennessee State playing the HBCU games. Uh, you know, you lost one last season, I believe, the one at the Liberty Bowl. Yes, yes. Uh, just a tough, tough loss of of a game there. Gate revenue, crowd, right, all of that. I right. mean, let's let's be real about it. That's exactly what. It, talk about this year's schedule. Well, this year uh, we have Mississippi Valley on August 31st in the John Merritt Classic. Uh, we'll play them, and then we play uh, MTSU. We we we'll step out of conference with that. Uh, uh, FBS opponent, and then we have Jackson State in mm-hmm. Memphis. You know, assuming we don't get another hurricane and get it rained out, which I don't think. In will Memphis, happen. no doubt. <laughs> yeah, uh, but um, uh, Jackson State, and then I think we play Arkansas Pine Bluff, uh, um, and those are our three HBCU games this year, and uh, that that keeps us, uh, you know, close to our heritage and, and who we are uh, as a university. But uh, those, those are going to be some exciting games. Got some contract issues out of the way. I know you're excited to be at Tennessee State. You're an alumnus, and I think it's very important because I, I was trying to think through this conference, and I, I think we got one other maybe. How important is that to you to have that kind of continuity to your staff, uh, which you've had great continuity with, but to Rod Reed personally? Uh, I mean, it means the world. You know, we're still working some things out, but uh, I think everything will work out for the good, and, and that's just huge uh, to be able to do what we've done in this program in the last 10 years, you know, get to the playoffs, do something that hadn't been done for 30 years, uh, uh, you know, have a lot of winning seasons under your belt. It's really, really cool, uh, especially when you're at your university. You take a lot of pride in that, and, uh, you know, it becomes a little a bit more personal to you uh, uh, when that happens. So, uh, you know, I have full confidence in, in Ms. Phillips and the president. How do we get everything worked out? All right, let's go. Let's talk basketball. I had a tweet yesterday about Marcel. Talk a little bit about your children, and he's the basketball guy in the family, right? Yeah, he is. I got a daughter over at Brentwood Academy who's a really good cheerleader, and she run. She actually finished, I think, uh, fourth in the heptathlon, and she finished sixth in the hurdles in the state. Outstanding. As a and uh, Marcel is uh, uh, he's considered an elite basketball player. We just left the Chris Paul camp yesterday, and he was a top 40 player uh, at, at that camp out of uh, about 240 players. So, uh he expects a lot out of himself. I expect a lot out of him. Uh, he just got to keep pushing. He'll be playing uh, probably um, on the varsity with NBA uh, football uh, this fall. So I'm excited for him, uh, you know, athletically and academically, and my daughter also. Yeah, outstanding. Great news. And like I told Coach Gross, Twitter is real. So that's where I learned that from. <laughs> <laughs> so just to be, it was a proud dad tweet to be, yeah, <laughs> or absolutely. To be certain with that. Congratulations to you. Looking forward to seeing you a couple times here on the ESPN3 broadcast. And yes. uh, they will be outstanding games, no doubt. Entertaining. You guys, though, Tennessee State, it like, takes like four and a half hours to play a game. You guys are the longest stretch in the conference. How does that work? Um, I, I don't know. Uh, I think know, it's that band you got at it, halftime. That, it's pretty that, good. That has something to do with it. I think <laughs> they put some restrictions uh, in NCAA for us. Uh, but, you know, uh, Dr. McDonald, man, he does an awesome yeah. job with uh, – uh, Reggie McDonald does an awesome job with the band. The aristocratic uh, aristocratic band are the best band in the land. And it's great when you pull yeah. up uh, to a stadium and you hear them rocking and, uh, you know, you, you get up in the game and that band start pumping. So – uh, it's great to have that kind of support. And also invited to the NFL draft as well. Absolutely. <laughs> so that'll Absolutely. tell you everything you need to know. Rod Reed, thanks for joining us. So VC Media Day continues. I'm going to move on to some more schools. We're done with Tennessee State. Thanks to Chris and Rod for joining us. Back after this. A smile, such a simple gesture, an effortless contraction of muscles, a flash of teeth, Healthy smiles have the power to spread joy, courage, and love. When you smile, it transforms you and the world around you. So if you feel the urge, go ahead and use that simple gesture to spread joy. Keep your smile healthy and strong. Choose Delta Dental, protecting more smiles than anyone. Head to Eastern Kentucky as OVC Media Day continues here in Nashville. Daryl McCleskey Jr., all everything, but he's an <laughs> offensive star for uh, Eastern Kentucky. Daryl, welcome. Welcome. Nice glad to, glad to have you glad here. Glad to be here. It's all really right. good to be here. So we're got close time to fire the cannon, right? Yes, sir. It's almost that time. All right, give me, Daryl, give, give me your interpretation of firing the cannon. Firing the what cannon. What does that mean to the offensive group? So the offensive group is scoring touchdowns and putting points on the board. So that's firing that cannon. All right. Let's talk about uh, changes. 
a few changes. You had an offensive coordinator change. Uh, uh, not a lot of changes overall in the staff, but how has that helped you? What, it, what is your incorporating into the game plan? What do you perceive that to be going forward in 19? Um, the changes, I think it was good changes. Our coach is more of a, uh, we're going to take what they give us type of play style. So I think we all have meshed well with this offense and we feel like it's better for us now. So we we just been getting our chemistry right and you know and getting ready for the season. I'm gonna ask coach the same question but I'm gonna fire away with you too. <laughs> The success you had, particularly in the second half of the season, last season, that really was important mm -hmm. to kind of get you going. And the result of that is, is that you're showing up in some preseason polls. Oh, yeah. Us guys on this side of the fence, we love talking about that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't know how you and coach feel about it, but you have to acknowledge that that gave Eastern Kentucky a lot of attention, how well you played in the back half of the season. It definitely did. And the most important thing it, I think it gave us was it gives us momentum into the next season. We left off on a good note, so we know where we want to pick up at, and we know the standard now. So. We just gonna keep riding the wave as long as it go. All right, so I talked to Josh Pearson of Jacksonville State about his Twitter handle, so I gotta get with yours too. <laughs> All right, talk to me about Stink Daddy. What's up with that? Um, at first it was like, that was the first name I created. And I had um, been meaning to change it, but like <laughs> after a while it's like, everyone got like liked it more than I thought. So I was like, I guess I'm gonna keep it. That might be something I got in my back pocket. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So you had a chance to change it and you didn't. Oh yeah, I did, but I mean, I thought it was I thought people wouldn't like it as much, but people kind of think it's funny, so I was like, I'm going to keep it. Okay. Good, good deal. In choosing Eastern Kentucky, kind of talk a little bit about your thought process there. Um it it was it was all, I feel like it was meant to be. It felt like home on a visit. I really had made some relationships, long lifelong relationships on my visit with people that I knew I wanted to connect with and it just felt like the best place for me. So I thought that was, you know, it's home, Eastern Kentucky. Okay, so I'm not giving multiple test questions to the student athletes here, but I gotta <laughs> have you complete the sentence. Mm -hmm. For Eastern Kentucky to be successful in twenty nineteen, we must do be focused and stay on track. I mean, we know everything not going to go as planned, but as long as we believe in each other and keep fighting, I feel like it'll work in our favor. All right. Joe McCleskey, or Stink Daddy, so <laughs> let me get, make sure I get this right. Stink underscore Daddy 10, right? Yeah. Have I got that right? Yes, sir. Okay, all right. right. <laughs> make sure you give him a follow on Twitter, although he's going to keep the account now, right? Have we got confirmation on that? Yes, okay, sir. he's going to keep the account as well. Somehow I don't think Coach Elder would go for that, but yeah, anyway, we'll, we'll figure it out later on. Make sure you watch him play football too. Fantastic, explosive player on offense for Eastern Kentucky. Coach Mark Elder. He'll fire the cannon. EKU <laughs> coming up next, OBC Media Day. At EKU, you'll learn to take a broader view of your world. But we also understand it's the details that shape the big picture. So go ahead, play with fire. Think on your feet or touch the sky. Here, you'll be a part of something new something big, something beautiful. Be a Colonel. Your time is now. Back at OBC Media Day in Nashville, Richmond, Kentucky has made their way to the West, actually, I guess, to get by geography right. Mark Elder, head coach, Eastern Kentucky. Coach, welcome. Thank you for having me. You're excited to be here, I'm sure, because yes. you've got perhaps your best football team to date since you've been coming to media day. So let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, not perhaps. This is the best team we've had. So uh, we're the most talented that we've been since we've, we've gotten there. This will be year four for us as a staff. Uh, this is definitely the most talented, definitely the deepest. And, and really, I think the, the part that's come the furthest is culturally our alignment is, is by far the best. So that's, that's a great thing. That, I think that translates a great deal to victories in, in the fall. Got five guys that can play quarterback. Who's it going to be? Uh, I'm well, supposed to ask that question in July. Now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we've not named our, our starter yet. Um, not ready to. 
Uh, we had a bunch of different guys that uh, certainly are capable. We had a, a pair of guys that, that performed a little bit higher in the spring uh, than the other couple. Uh, they'll get a, get a majority of the reps come fall camp, and, and we'll determine from there. Uh, everybody will have an opportunity for sure, but uh, you know, that's still to be determined at this point in time. And going back to October, I remember you were down to your third quarterback in that victory over Austin P. so it was a struggle all season long. Actually, so we got to four. Oh, did you? There, yes. So, um, you know, Parker McKinney, who who stepped in about midway through the third quarter. There, we were down. He was a true freshman. He was number four at that point in time for us. So, um, and then he did great. You know, he he, he really had a, a spectacular two and a half games there, and, and led us to a few victories. And and really think he he did a lot of great things in the spring as well. He was one of the guys that really uh, performed at a high level. So are you on schedule? And by that I mean in your fourth season, you said this is your best team. Is this where you anticipated being and felt needed to be when you took the job? Um, I don't know that I had a, you know, hey, here's exactly where we're going to be in year four at that point in time. And um, no, I mean, you want, you want to win a national championship every year. I mean, you, know, you, want to, you want to win them all. So um, – I know this, we are very excited about this team. Uh, we think that we have the makings of a very, very good team. We have the makings of the best team that we've had. Uh, we haven't, have had an outstanding off season and we're anticipating a great year. So we visited with Daryl McCleskey just a moment ago. How integral is he gonna be to this offense? He's a huge part. I mean, he's been very successful throughout his time uh, and we're expecting big things from Daryl. And this is his senior year. Uh, he's been productive for us for three straight years now. I mean, he, even from his freshman, true freshman year on, he's he's really done a great job. Uh, he's going to be huge for us. We, we know that he can be a great playmaker for us. He's great with the ball in his hands. Um, he's great without the ball in his hands. He plays really hard and is a great teammate. So we're expecting big things from Daryl. Statistically, I thought your defense improved as the season went on last season. Do you feel that's the case? And what do you think about 19? Yes, we, we are. Uh, we had statistically a very good defense last year, uh, or a good defense. We were second in, in the conference in most categories, points, total defense, all of those things. Uh, we've got a lot back. Uh, we've got 11 of our 14 top tacklers back. We've got uh, like 80% of our negative yards plays, 70% of our takeaways back. Uh, anticipating that we will take a step forward this coming up year. I think that we'll, we should have our best defense as well. All right, let's do an Eastern Kentucky commercial for a moment. The new recreation center, just a <laughs> lot of changes going on on campus. So there for a basketball game back in the winter. Yeah, so uh, for regular students, this is as, as exciting of a time to be coming to EKU as you could have. We've got uh, a brand new, couple brand new dorms with a beautiful garden outside of the one. We've got uh, the new dining facility with all types of restaurants underneath it. New Powell is, is uh, um, almost done there as well. And then we have this brand new rec center that's going to be completed this fall. So for regular Joe Schmo student, it's an exciting time. And then we talk about football. We have uh, a brand new 12 thousand square foot weight room that was built just over a year ago a 122 seat team room uh, a 10 million dollar visitor side that has one of the premier locker rooms and one of the premier premier player lounges in the country so uh, it's really an exciting time to be coming to football uh, to play football here at EKU and and to put all that together and in, in the trajectory of where we're headed as a program I think this is uh, certainly an exciting time for you yeah, it really it really felt that way when I was with uh, with basketball in, in the winter recruiting what is your recruiting spear? What is your range, if you will, out, out of Richmond? Yeah, you could go into Ohio some. You've got some contacts there. Yep. Back into West Virginia, back into Tennessee. Talk a little bit about what you're looking at. Yeah, so we typically stick within about a six-hour radius of, of Richmond, Kentucky. So you draw uh, a Get radius. a lot there. We, we can. Yep. And, and good what football, we look at, too. Right? And really good football. Yeah. And, and you look at uh, why do we do that. That's typically where we are um, because – we want it to be a drivable distance. If we play at 12 or we play at three, that's that's something that you know the family can get up in the morning, drive in town, watch the game, see their kid afterwards, and then drive home. And and we'd like that for that to be the case. And, and there's a lot of really good football within those six hours. So um, that stretches a, a long ways. I mean, that is obviously all of Kentucky. You go into 
Ohio, even western Pennsylvania, although we haven't signed anyone from there. Uh, southern part of the Michigan, we go up through Chicago. We'll go over to St. Louis. That's within six hours. We'll go south to Tennessee, to Alabama. Uh, Georgia, Atlanta is a big area for us. Uh, the western part of North Carolina and South Carolina, West Virginia. So there, there's a bunch of really good football that, that's in the state of Kentucky and then within that six-hour radius. That's, that's our footprint for recruiting. So when you have a football stadium named after one of the winningest coaches in, in FBS, what does that mean to you to play at Roy Kidd Stadium and, and understand that, that culture, that heritage, that tradition? Well, and to have Coach Kidd uh, alive and, and kicking and, and right there in Richmond, Kentucky, it's fantastic. How intimidating is it? Well, no, I mean, well, I'll say this. That, yeah, yeah you, you walk in and, and uh, every day to go down to the field, I walk by his statue, you know, so I'm, I'm yeah. sitting in the chair that he once sat in and, and I walk by his statue every day and I look up and see, uh, you know, his name on, on the side of the stadium. Um, it, what it is, is it's a great reminder of the, the expectation level. Uh, on a daily basis, and, yeah. and there is tremendously high expectations and standards that I want to live up to on a daily basis that our players want to, and, and I love having that. I love having that daily reminder. Back to your comments earlier, and it speaks to the fact that now EKU has been mentioned in a lot of preseason polls. That's what us guys like to do. That's what sure. we like to talk yeah, about, absolutely. right? But that's not been the case in your previous time at EKU. No. That's That speaks to the attention that you're getting, that upward trajectory you uh, spoke about size this league up for me. I mean, you're picked to finish third behind Jacksonville State and SEMO. You think that's kind of fair given what's coming back, kind of where you expect to be going into the season? Yeah, no, that's – hey, the preseason polls are all based upon what you did the last year. I mean, yeah. we were – Third last year, so it's it's amazing. It's almost like a, just a, a copycat of what. Hey, what you're the saying final we didn't get the was. polls right? This media guy. <laughs> no, no, I'm not saying that. I, I <laughs> nah, think, that's. What, I think it's we're, yeah. we're in a really fair position, and we're going to have to um, play really well to live up to that, and and um, we're going to have to play really well to exceed that, and and. Um, you know, obviously the, the old saying of if, if you don't have someone's respect, you, you get the opportunity to go earn it. You know, we have that. Sure. So if we don't like where we're picked, um, we'll have the opportunity to go earn that. Um, so and, and we're going to have the opportunity to go earn where we were, you know. So, uh, no, I, I think that there's a lot of positive momentum and, and people are feeling like EKU is certainly moving in the right direction as far as the football program. I feel that I, I, I'm not, there, there's no question that our players are very confident that we're going to be a good football team and, and we're going to have an opportunity to either go out and show that we were, that was where we were, we weren't as good or we were better than that. And that's, uh, preseason polls don't really determine much other than a little bit of hype in the, in the preseason. We like to do it. It's Absolutely. A, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. Absolutely. And this is a football team, Mark Elder's team picked to finish in the top 25 of the nation, preseason number three in a conference. They also speaks to how strong this conference is as well. Yes. Mark Elder, thanks for your time yeah, this you. morning. He's got many more rounds to make. He'll take uh, Stink Daddy with him wherever <laughs> Stink Daddy But There's, there's Daryl. Our thanks to the fine folks from Eastern Kentucky. We'll continue OVC Media Day after this. Hey, Dad, got a quarter? Sure. I see an unstable skateboard and a long, long recovery. Helmet? You are one expensive kid. I'm next. Wait, I see a lady. Lady? Wearing a red coat. You can't predict the future, but you can prepare for it. With affordable individual and family plans, call Farm Bureau Health Plans. We've got you covered. Heads up, everyone. Best Behavior Commissioner of the Ohio Valley Conference, Beth DeBush, joins us. Beth, welcome. Thank you. You've been in, uh, in this job a while, and you just recapped, I think, something very important. The last 14 months have been fantastic for this conference. It truly has been a nice run. You know, Bob, as well as I, this league has a rich history. But the past 14 months, when you see the success both on the playing fields and behind the scenes, has really been tremendous for this league. Most notably, the success of getting the two teams selected in the men's basketball tournament and getting the two wins makes this league feel much better about itself. But in light of media day, the fact that we had two teams that were selected to the field and got two teams last year leaves us really heartened and excited for this upcoming football season. Tell us about some of the initiatives around the 150th anniversary of 
college football. How exciting is that to be part of the 150th anniversary? Each FCS conference will make sure that their teams have patches on their uniforms to celebrate. We as a league, given our rich history, certainly have a wonderful platform in which to tell our stories in addition to the ESPN3 package. So you'll be helping us tell the stories. We'll have a three-minute video that highlights some of the big plays in the league over the history and some of our key players. We will have a throwback Thursday day where we use social media to tell the stories of OVC football. Our institutions are going to do something either the weekend before or after the celebration and the actual anniversary, I believe, is November 6th. So each campus will be doing something, we'll be telling stories, and we'll be using all of our media platforms. Just moments ago, you gave an incredible award to an incredible person, and I'll just kind of set that question up like that and let you kind of fill in the blanks. Well, we were delighted today to have in our midst and present Christian Abercrombie, TSU student athlete, linebacker for the Tigers, who was injured last year in a game against Vanderbilt, but has just a remarkable path to recovery. He is an impressive young man, has a wonderful spirit, and certainly has demonstrated a great deal of courage in overcoming so much adversity. We were fortunate enough that he and his family agreed to come up and be a part of today's celebration. Christian spent this morning spending some time talking with our ADs, the other coaches, and the other student athletes. So it was really just an honor and a privilege to give him a small token of just what we've seen, that he's demonstrated a great deal of courage. So he got a courage award from us. And that's an incredible honor to be bestowed upon. And, you know, in this day of mincing words and splicing words, that's really courage. That, that story, to me, embodies courage. Well, to see him come into the AD's room with a great big smile on his face talking about the future, that's really the story of all of this. He's overcome adversity, but we're talking about him taking classes and what he's going to do moving forward, and it leaves you really heartened. And, and the other thing that was really neat about today, and this is a moment in time, and we need to continue this conversation, is just how the student athletes were here to mm -hmm. be around him and to support him. It was just a neat, uh, neat environment this afternoon. So last year, we sat in this very same spot, and I made a mistake because I asked you, oh, it's been kind of a quiet summer. Summer, Commissioner, how's it? You say, hold on, Bob, hold on. What's going on this summer? What's been happening during that period of time? Well, it is a busy summer. Um, in the commissioner ranks and in the conference ranks, we spend much of June getting ready for the next year and doing a lot of our national work. From an Ohio Valley Conference standpoint, we had a lot of wrap-up from the spring meetings. As you know, our meetings are right after Memorial Day. Lots of progress on some issues there. What's big on the agenda is we are embarking on a new strategic plan on behalf of the Ohio Valley Conference. We're talking to all our administrators, our university presidents and chancellors, some student athletes, and really what's coming to pass is what we talked about earlier, how much pride there is relative to this league and how we can do a better job of telling the rest of the nation what we know is that some good things are going on in this conference and we need to present ourselves and promote ourselves in a way that the rest of the United States know what good things are going on in the OVC. And so we could speak to that via something that I'm involved in and I want to again thank you for allowing me to be involved in it, but that's the ESPN package. So could you speak to that a little bit. We certainly love our expanded partnership with ESPN. We've long been an ESPN partner, but just this past June, we finally signed the contract after two years of negotiation for the largest media deal the Ohio Valley Conference has ever had. We have a seven-year deal with ESPN to make sure that we have at least 650 events on one of the ESPN platforms. Most notably, our programming will be on ESPN Plus, which is a digital platform. Our schools are producing every football game, every men's and women's basketball game, plus at least 28 other events. Then to supplement that, we have the ESPN3 package, and we have had a long relationship with you and Kevin Ingram, and for that we are most grateful, as you serve as the voice of OVC football. But we will have a football game of the week starting on September 23rd, working its way through the rest of the season using ESPN3. And what's great about ESPN3 is it's free access for folks that have a subscription more broadly through TV right. for ESPN, and it's just a wonderful platform for FCS football. I, I'm, I'm prejudiced, so let's preface that. You're a lawyer, I'm prejudiced, so let's preface yeah. that when we start. Uh, to your point, the camaraderie, the relationships in this league, 
I get to experience him from a different perspective. I'm outside of that sphere. I just get to be the backslapping media guy that comes through. But it, it's sincere and it's genuine. And I kind of wanted you to speak to that a little bit. It, 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 it's real. We may have our differences about the directions, but the universities that are involved in this league, I think top to bottom, are, are, are very much aligned with your leadership and with the leadership of your staff. So, you know, I'm really blessed to be able to work in intercollegiate athletics and to serve in this role and to work around student athletes every day. And I know that. But in addition to that blessing, it's really to work with such a wonderful group of schools and just administrators and presidents and chancellors who really care about what we're doing. At its core, I think the fact that we have a similarity in mission and vision in the type of schools that are members of the Ohio Valley Conference and a relatively tight geographic mm -hmm. footprint that genuinely helps us. And then we just have a nice group of people that we're working with that care about student athletes. And if we stay, stay being focused on caring for student athletes, the rest of this comes fairly easy because we know what we're trying to do. We're trying to make sure our students have the best experience possible. So you're right, everybody doesn't agree every step of the way, but by and large on the decisions and the issues that matter, we're pretty much in lockstep. And I think it's worth noting that there's been for whatever reason, uh, turnover in leadership of these universities at the president's level, the chancellor's level, if you will, all of that has taken place in the midst of your tenure, yet again, that consistency and that continuity still remains. So the group that hired me, uh, from a board of presidents standpoint, there's not a single president wow. remaining on that board. But I believe now there's you, a stat for football media day, right? Yeah, but I believe you were at our spring meeting dinner. What was neat, and this doesn't happen in a lot of leagues, I think we had four former presidents that still decided right. to come back to come to the commissioner's dinner. It was a just, great meal, too. Yeah, just because they wanted to see their friends sure. and to be a part of the conference. So I think that sense of pride and the sense of history in the league and that shared sense of values brings people back and makes people enjoy the process of serving because we know at its core what we're doing is about doing things the right way and about serving students. And how can you not feel good about doing that? I just sense being around you just a genuine love for this job. And, and, and I, I want to selfishly let you take a chance to you work with wonderful people in your office. And, and I think it's worth, I think it's important. I mean, this is, this is brag day, this is media day, sure. whatever you want to call it. I think it's important for you to kind of talk about it. The talented people you get to work with every day, that has to get you out of bed in the morning. Well, we really are quite fortunate. We have a very small office space in Brentwood, Tennessee, and there's 11 of us that spend a great deal of time together. So if we didn't have a tremendous staff, that <laughs> might get to be very small. But from from our media staff that you work with regularly, Kyle Schwartz, Heather Brown, who just do a tremendous job, and I'm in my 10th year. They have more longevity in the league than I do. They've been around the league. They know the history. They know the background. To our young administrators who you're working with today, Bryce Robinson and Jonathan Owen, who came to us both as former interns, one a Belmont grad, the other a TSU grad, have done tremendous work. To Lauren Burst and Stephanie Castera, who helped me administratively and with our rules compliance who have NCA backgrounds and national ties to Travis Teletasi that you work with regularly um, in our sports administration role and Kate Burnett who also does a lot of our championships work. We are just really fortunate to have a good team. They seem to get along well together. By the time we get to the spring meeting, they probably need a little bit of a break after um, two weeks on yeah. the road. But having said that, we are really fortunate to have a dynamic, good, young team. I'm the geezer of the group. And so so they keep me young no in this means. overall process as well. So really fortunate in getting to serve the OVC in this way. So I tell this little story. Uh, we may be out of time, but it's the commissioner. So, okay, uh, Jonathan says we're okay. <laughs> so after about three years of emails back and forth, I finally get to meet Lauren. <laughs> so I think that speaks, what I'm getting at is I think that speaks to just the kind of relationships that you could have working with the member institutions that you don't see every day versus being able to see them in the manner that you do every day. Yeah, I think well, that's special. Well, again, we are fortunate to have a group of members that go out on campus. Yeah. What could be more fun than yeah. seeing, your, seeing your friends that you don't get to see that often in person? So it's, it, it, it's a good opportunity to travel on weekends, as we both know, yeah. to go some pretty neat places. So just, just a couple headliners. Football, the schedule's in place. It's available at the, at the website, the ESPN3 schedule. 
schedule, the remainder of which ESPN Plus. Basketball, we will return to the Ford Center again. What a tremendous, much uh, questioned in the end turned out to be fantastic move to the Ford Center. Well, we've certainly enjoyed our partnership in Evansville, and as you well know, Bob, they've really been such good and gracious hosts. We, it is a partnership, sincerely. We love working with them. I think they enjoy working with us. It's really important, though, that it's a make-sense decision and that we have fans also attend the event. So the, one challenge, the, <laughs> the one challenge that we still have, and what I would encourage anybody listening, is as you plan your, your upcoming winter travel, to put to stop at the OVC championships on that list because it is such a cool city, such a cool event. People enjoy it once they've been there. We just need to make sure that we have a good level of attendance at that event. You know, you and I get a chance to, to do that you longer than I do. And uh, gosh, tournament lasts four or five days. We never go outside. The hotel is connected to the arena, Ford Center, and it works out perfect. And after five days of it, you're like, I haven't been outside yet. Yeah. Oh, it's snowing. Who cares? Yeah, I it's, outside a, it, yet. it's a wonderfully easy environment with the hotels being located downtown. There, I actually must get a little bit more free time than you do, Bob, because there are good restaurants in the downtown <laughs> area, and there's an ability to have fun outside the games. Although the games are typically yeah, so compelling, really, you don't really. you don't want to do things outside of the venue. But it really has worked out well for us. And again, I'm just excited to your point of partnerships yeah. that we have good partners there as well. And let me check in. Last thing, uh, baseball moved to a new uh, new site, new venue this year. All indications are that was fantastic for the conference as well. Um, people really enjoyed the trip up to Marion. I think what's important for us again is attendance. We need fans to follow. That goes. That's a mantra I think with all our championships. It's really important. I think being in the northern regions of the conference is important to the sense of overall conference family. We have schools stretching up as far north as Illinois and as far south as you know to Jacksonville. We need to spread those championships throughout the footprint to be fair to all our members. Okay, so football, media days. Do you get to make the decision where you go on Saturdays during football season? I do make my own decisions. <laughs> so um, I'll end up I'm going. I'm not going to ask your criteria I'll for end that. Up, I'll end up going to every school at least once sure. during football season. And it is a real pleasure to get out on the road and see everybody, get, get the sense of game day environments, talk to the coaches, talk to the administrators. That, it's a lot of fun, as uh, you know. I encourage you to do that. <laughs> and when, we, when Kevin and I do not see the commissioner or Travis, we know we're okay. So sometimes, and sometimes, it, and that's okay too, right? Yeah. It doesn't work out. You're not where Kevin and I are, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Oftentimes, we'll try to go to a game that may not be the most high profile game because it gives more opportunities sure. to spend time with the administrators and the coaches and just has a different pace to it. But it's always a pleasure to see both okay. of you All out right. on the road. We'll be on the lookout for you. We won't put you on the roof at Eastern Illinois. I was afraid you might have gotten blown <laughs> off the roof that time we were there. <laughs> so we've got, the, we've got that squirt away. I think that was Thank a bucket you, list <laughs> item for Thank me. You, I've done it. Thank you, Brad Walker, for hanging on to the commissioner. We were concerned she might have blown away that day. <laughs> Commissioner, thank you. For, thank you for having Kevin and I thoroughly enjoy it. Thank you for this wonderful group you allowed me to work with. We've had a lot of fun. Uh, I think... Uh, uh, I think you're done for the day. <laughs> so we should go have lunch together. We right? are actually going back to 80s meetings. So we have about four <laughs> hours left in meeting. But thank you, Bob, for Foolish all, your, me. Foolish all your great work on but, behalf of but, the league. And, and you kept it up this summer. That's important. <laughs> I want to make sure that Commissioner Beth the Bush with us. Our thanks to her and the fantastic staff for helping us out here. OVC Media Day from Nashville. A smile, such a simple gesture, an effortless contraction of muscles, a flash of teeth. Healthy smiles have the power to spread joy, courage, and love. When you smile, it transforms you and the world around you. So if you feel the urge, go ahead and use that simple gesture to spread joy. Keep your smile healthy and strong. Choose Delta Dental, protecting more smiles than anyone. Hey, one of the best names in the league, T.J. Jefferson. How you doing? UT Martin, how are you, man? Yeah, good. Glad to have you along, linebacker for the Skyhawks. Yes, sir. 
incredibly disappointing season last season. How do you rebound from that? Uh, we just come in, focus every day in the summer, and just train hard. Uh, we've just been ready, ready to roll and get this season on the right on the way. So, how quickly after last season ended did you get in the workouts and you get in that routine and you try and make that go away? Uh, we took about two or three weeks off, and then we got back rolling. Uh, Coach Sim had a call to team meeting and uh, got the seniors and the juniors and the guys who are gonna, we're going to roll with this year and just all got them focused on the next step, and that was just rebounding, working hard, and getting ready for this upcoming season. How quickly do you think the team did indeed turn the corner? Um, I thought it took a couple weeks. Uh, we had to get over the pain of losing um, that tough season, and uh, I thought it took a couple weeks, but, you know, it, we, it happened for the better. Uh, losing is the best medicine, as I heard one of my friends say, and and it's surely we got a good dose of it, and we're going to yeah, hopefully use it for the better this upcoming season. So you had a, a difficult pre-conference schedule last year. Mm -hmm. uh, had a good time on a couple of trips. Mm -hmm. did, did some fun, did some fun things. Uh, you beat Austin P in the rain. Yes, sir. Looks like this was rolling. Mm -hmm. What happened in between? Um, I think we just lost a little bit of focus. Uh, we won. We finally got over the hump. Won our first game against Austin P, like you said. And uh, I think we lost a little focus in practice. Uh, we didn't come to work every day. We didn't focus like we should have. And uh, that led to a couple close losses. That led to a couple big losses against CMO at home, which we need to you know, rebound from. But um, it was just tough. It was just tough to kind of get the ball rolling once you, you start taking a couple L's. OK. TJ is initials for? Tyrone Jefferson. All right. Mm -hmm. So he calls him TJ. All right. We get. We got. My dad. My dad's Tyrone. So okay. my mom had to differentiate just some kind of way. So I'm TJ. <laughs> he's Tyrone at the house. So. Not junior or anything, right? No, okay. All right. Gonna get it going that way. Tell us a little bit about your high school career uh, because you had a fantastic one, and then your decision to go to UT Martin. Uh, I had a great high school career. Went to my, nearby Montgomery Belt Academy. Um, had a great four years. Uh, love working with all the coaches, all the friends that I made. Um, it was fun. Won a state championship senior year. Um, then decided, got an opportunity from Coach Simpson to walk on and, and be a part of this great program. All right, so you hit Martin, Tennessee, unlike Nashville. Mm -hmm. My daughter's attended school, graduated at UT Martin, so I know that. I can say that. I don't put you under the gun. What attracted you to Martin? Um, just the opportunity. Um, uh, Coach Simpson gave me the opportunity to come there and play, and that was all I was really looking for. Was just come and work hard, and that's all he that's all he talked about, and that's all I needed to hear from him. Is there a particular place in this conference you don't like to go and play at? Is, is there when you look at it, you're like, oh man, we gotta go there. This or it's our season to go there. Uh, no, I can't say that. I actually, um, especially last season, I love playing on the road. It 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 presents a new set of challenges, a, a new environment to play in. And uh, it's, for me, it's fun playing on the road. I love it. It's just. All right, so uh, this has been not a multiple choice, fill in the blank. So I've been asking a lot of the student athletes this question. For UT Martin to be successful this season, what must happen? Uh, come to work every day. Uh, focus in, on, in practice, focus in, in the film room, focus in, in the weight room. Um, Come to, come to work week in and week out, and we'll be okay. Okay. Uh, how much uh, how much does Coach make y'all go watch his son play or <laughs> Chancellor Carver's? <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, think so. Ty, Ty's a great kid, and he comes up there, and he, he loves working with our quarterbacks, and okay. he's picking Dresser's brain all the time, and the guy's going to be special when he gets out. Uh, I guarantee you that. All right, and that's not Coach speak, right? No, that's not Coach that's speak. The, yeah, I've, I've seen the man throw. Have, have you seen Chancellor Carver's son kick? I have seen him kick. He's he's out there on the field kicking every other day, too. The high school actually plays on our field, yeah. so he's there getting ready for his season. So. Those, those Martin Westview guys are doing pretty good, aren't they? They are doing pretty they good. Are. They'll, be, they'll be better this year. Yeah, good deal. TJ, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Yes, UT sir. Martin is our feature in this little block. Jason Simpson is lingering just beyond the monitor here. We're bringing the head coach in to talk about 2019 with him. OBC Media Day continues from Nashville. At the University of Tennessee at Martin, we are into soaring, not boring. It's time to broaden your horizons. At the place where your future can take flight. 
Let your spirit soar at the University of Tennessee at Martin. UT Martin head coach Jason Simpson joins us, longest tenured guy in the conference. Uh, <laughs> last, he, he chuckled about that. That's just statistical fact, coach. There you go, okay. Uh, last season, as you mentioned, probably aged you a little bit more than you uh, would have preferred. Yeah, no doubt. It was uh, you know, the first time in uh, 13 years uh, that we have not had a winning record or, or had a losing record in, in the OBC yeah. um, uh, conference play. So it was a uh, it was a tough year, no doubt. Uh, you learn a lot about yourself. You learn about uh, kids learn about the uh, about themselves. Uh, you know, it creates a, certainly a sense of urgency, and we're ready to get going. Okay, so let's take us through last season. Right. Pre-conference schedule, uh, not so successful. Mm -hmm. A lot of long trips. You get to Austin P. We're talking to TJ about this moment. Austin P. Comes to your place. Mm -hmm. You beat him in the rain. Mm -hmm. Looks like we got this thing right back where it needs to be. What happened in the interim? Right, it's you know I think we went on the road the next week to to Murray and and didn't play very well and I think we lost by seven or something like that, and so just never could get the consist consistency. Uh, you know I can sit here and ramble off uh, you know a lot of things to you that we had to deal with internally. Uh, sure. You lose five guys in the spring for a season in the in injury. You lose five offensive linemen during the season. You know for the rest of the year you lose your quarterback. Uh, I guess five games in the end of the year. Uh, you know, so, uh, and, and you lose two overtime games and you have the lead against Jacksonville State in the last 50 seconds and they go down and do a great job and score and take the win. You know, so those are games in the past that we've won. Mm -hmm. And, we, you know, we just were not a, uh, and that's my responsibility. We've got to be able to coach through that adversity. We've got to be able to coach through and win those close games. And uh, fortunately for 12 years, we've been able to do that. But last year we didn't get it done. So, uh, you know, like I said, chomping at the bit, ready to get going. Did, did you feel compelled with that last success to make some changes? Uh, because you didn't for the most part, but I was just curious, did that thought enter your mind? Well, uh, you know, you're, you're always going to have some turnover in your coaching staff, which creates, uh, you know, some different ideas, some different uh, people that come in, which sometimes doesn't force you to make changes because it, it kind of changes on its own. Uh, you're always going to have uh, personnel changes within your program because of graduation or injuries or, or, or other guys that you bring, you know, bring in. But, uh, you know, you, you you have a f certain formula, but you have to be willing to adapt. You have to be willing to, um, you know, do things that uh, t to overcome, you know, what if we're in the same situation again this year? What, what if do? the injuries come again? You know, those are things that you can plan on, but uh, you got to be able to, uh, to, to coach through them. So uh, I think this leadership, uh, TJ, uh, Jalen, the two kids you'll meet today, uh, they're, I think they're better prepared mentally as the leaders of the football team to prepare us Monday through Friday. So when we get to those Saturdays games, uh, they'll figure out a way to get it done. So I want to talk about two quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. One, your quarterback at UT Martin, and the other one in your family. But let's go to the U <laughs> let's go to the UT Martin one at first. Where are you at in your quarterback situation? Very uh, more talent than we've had in quite a long time. Uh, I don't know if we've ever had three. Uh, they can win games in this league. Uh, Dresser uh, wins working back from the injury. Um, I'm not, I don't know if he's full strength right now, but he's getting close. Uh, JoJo Hudson at times really showed uh, that he he can uh, can score and be productive in this league. And John Bacchus, the redshirt freshman, played against Tennessee State the last game of the year and was very productive. And he continued to do that in the spring. So uh, it'd be a good you know good battle. But those guys uh, are very talented players. Okay, so, so we got a quarterback controversy, then, right? <laughs> no this doubt. This started no doubt. July, right? No doubt. It's a it's a good it's a good problem. <laughs> it's a good problem to have. Okay, now the other quarterback in your house, right? Uh, for those of you who do not, do not know, Coach Simpson has a fantastic son who's a fantastic quarterback. How hard has that been? And I've heard some stories about your Friday nights and the Saturday game day. Yeah. Kind of talk me through that with right. Ty. Well, you know. Um, First of all, as a, as a dad, you know, I'm a dad first, and, uh, and I love what I do for a living, and that's been a part of my life for 25 years now, you know, as a coach. But, uh, you know, that's part of the reason we, we've stayed in Martin for so long. Been, you know, we love living there, but being able to, you know, uh, see Ty play and uh, all my kids play and still, you know, have an opportunity to be the head coach at an OVC, uh, uh, the travel in our league is very conducive for that. And so I've got a good staff, and so, uh, you know, that was part of my commitment to be able to – and they play in our stadium. 
and Westview plays yeah, in our stadium. Do. So be able to watch them on a Friday night, uh, you know, and still make the drive. You know, the Murray games are easy. Uh, you know, I'd leave and drive over Friday night or the Austin P game, or East Illinois. So, uh, you know, it, you just kind of have to suck it up a little bit. But those are memories as a dad that, uh, you know, that's I've got two jobs and one and both are very important. So as I talk to some of your fellow coaches, mm -hmm. one of the things we determine is that Twitter is real. Yeah. Oh, maybe not. Anyhow, <laughs> that said, I have seen you at a number of different campuses throughout. Yeah. What has that been like this summer in your role? And then, again, dad first. Yeah, you know, it's been great. One, uh, that was something he needed to do. He needed to get out and see those opportunities. As a quarterback, uh, those Power Five type guys, they'll start making commitments, you know, within the next – 18 months and you know if that's what he wants to do I wanted to give him those opportunity uh, now it also allowed me to pick some people's brains and maybe uh, steal a first down or two with some ideas that sure. they've had so uh, from that standpoint you know it was kind of two birds of one stone deal but uh, you know I have a 10 year old as well and uh, Graham will tell you though that in our house though he's the only one that's got an offer from YouTube Martin his older brother does not at this point so uh, that's always a contingent point in our house let me encourage you to offer him now the other thing I've got to ask you about is your chancellor's son's a pretty good kicker, too. Oh, right. What are we going to do with, without this? Oh, you know, if I can keep them all at home, if I keep them all at home <laughs> living at their parents' house and winning OVC championship games or, or conference games, uh, then that's a pretty good recruiting pitch by me. i got to imagine that that is an incredible situation. It is unlike anything in the yeah, country. You know, I, I really hadn't thought about it until you said it like that, but no, it is. Uh, you know, we've been very fortunate at, the, at our high school there. We've had two first-round picks over the years <laughs> yeah. with uh, Chad Clifton and uh, Justin Harrell. So, uh, uh, who knows? Maybe that'll continue. It's just business as usual for Jason Simpson. <laughs> UT Martin, uh, we'll have them. First game of the conference schedule uh, at Eastern Illinois, 28th of September. So our thanks to Jason Simpson for joining us. OVC Media Day continues. I'm seeing Austin B. and Tennessee Tech lurking around. Back after this. We are more than just athletes. We inspire scholars. We inspire leaders. We inspire champions. We inspire family. This is the Ohio Valley Conference. Open for a great sophomore season, Bailey Fisher, Tennessee Tech joins us. Bailey, welcome to OVC Media Day. Yes, sir. Thank You're you. You're hoping me. this is one of three, right? Right. Yes, back sir. as a junior, back as a senior, yes, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So a fabulous career, high school in Georgia. Talk about that decision process. To go to Tennessee Tech. Um, well, I mean, it was kind of last minute. Um, Coach Lamb and them, Coach Egg, the whole, whole new coaching staff got the um, got the job over here at Tech and. Coach Lane recruited me a little bit over at Mercer, and then he offered me as soon as he got the job. And I mean, I already had a relationship with him and stuff, so it just felt right just to come. And Coach Lamb being a Tennessee Tech alumnus as well, so that didn't uh, did hurt things as right, well. Right, yes, sir. Okay, you should be like a junior with all that you went through in your freshman year. Yes, sir. Talk a little bit about that. I mean, it was. I mean, it was a tough year, but I mean, it was definitely a very. Um, it was a great year for me, just like getting experience and stuff like that. And um, I mean, it was just one of those things where I got to learn from my mistakes. And um, I mean, it just helped me progress into being a better quarterback in the future. So the pre-conference schedule for Tennessee Tech last year was brutal. <laughs> brutal. Yes, sir. I just call it travel. Um, opening game, uh, you had the weather issue. Mm -hmm. uh, just, it just it just seemed like everything was stacked against you. Uh, let's just go at the end of the Utah State game. They put 70-plus on you. What were you thinking coming out of that as a freshman quarterback? I mean, um, you could say my confidence was a little down at, at times. But, I mean, our coach did a good job just, like, talking to us, um, telling us to stay up, just trust the process. Um, this isn't something that's going to just happen overnight. Um, it's going to be a day-by-day -day thing to get this thing turned around. And um, I feel like we got the right guys in here to do it. Um, it's just going to be a process. Okay, so there were times last season where it looked like you might be running for your life. <laughs> Looks like they've got the offensive line bolstered a little bit for you. That's got to give you a little comfort. Oh, yes, sir, for sure. We got um, four, four guys returning that were starters for us last year. Um, 
We added some JUCO guys coming in, and some freshmen coming in as well. So I mean, we got the we got the guys there. Now we just got to put in the work and just get better. I mean, which I, I'm completely confident in my my guys up front. So um, I feel like it's going to be a good year for them. Okay, weren't able to play last game of the season. Got injured. Where are we at with that? Um, 100%. Feeling good. Um, that was more just precautionary thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, feeling good now. 100%. Just ready to go. All right. Bailey Fisher, fourteen, right? Mm -hmm. All right, yes, all right. Want to make sure? Want to make sure we get that out because I've been, I've been given. I mean, you have the most straightforward one of some other Twitter handles that right, I've been yes, given. Sir. I've been given some of your fellow student <laughs> athletes grief about. So I wanted to make sure I clarify that. So, talk about the experience last year. First year coach with Coach Alexander, not necessarily first year coaching for him, but into that program for the first time. You into the program for the first time. Talk about that relationship. And um, how you I two mean, together. I feel like it's a really solid relationship. Um, I know Coach A cares for us players, all of us individually, um, and I mean, we care for him as well. We want to get this thing turned around for him because we know how much pride he has in the, um, the Tennessee Tech and for Cookville and stuff, and that's a big thing that he's done for the community. He's got the community and us involved in the community, and they're getting involved um, coming to the games and stuff like that. So, I mean, but like I said, Coach A, he he's like a father figure to all of us. Um, he's a great guy, and I don't, I don't know. I mean, he just love him. He's hanging in the wings. I want to know when he stops coaching and when he starts preaching. Is there a clear division there? Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's okay. It's media day. We're having fun. <laughs> right, yes, sir. Yeah, Coach A, he's a good guy. I mean, I mean, I'm sure y'all know he loves to talk sometimes. We'll be out there at practice sometimes, be tired, and he'll just keep talking. But, I mean, he's always got good stuff to say. Um, and we're just um, just fortunate to have him. Okay, so I've been asking this. This is a, a, a fun little exercise. Not multiple choice, but for Tennessee Tech to be successful this season, what must Bailey Fisher do? What must the team do? I mean, for me individually, I feel like I just got to execute and compete. Every every down, I got to focus on the things that I can control and just go out there um, and just compete. And then for us as a team, um, I mean, same thing. We just got to go there and compete every down and um, just execute, really, for the whole team. And for me, I just got to execute, and they got to execute and just compete. Staring a losing or winless season down the, down the tube last season, and then you come up with the win against Murray State. And they were the hot team at the time in the league. Come to uh, come to Tucker, you knock them off. Can I talk about what that was like. Oh, it was amazing. Just getting that first win. Um, it was a lot of our a lot of our guys. Cause we had a lot of freshmen playing. It was our first win as collegiate players, and um, just no better feeling. And that's what we we talk about as a team. Just remember that, hold that win in, and like know how that feels, so we can get back to there, so we can put in the work to want to get back to that point. Bailey Fisher, quarterback, Tennessee Tech, has been joining us. Our thanks to him. He's got a real easy Twitter handle compared to some of his colleagues. We wish you nothing but the best yes, in your second season at Cookville. Thank you. Coach A is a column. Dwayne Alexander, he'll be in that seat right after this OVC Media Day. More Tennesseans are turning to the state's best public university, Tennessee Tech. Tech produces bold, fearless, confident graduates who get an outstanding return on investment, who graduate with the least debt in the South, almost half with no debt, earning higher mid-career salaries than graduates from other public universities. Tennessee Tech, just like our state, is soaring to great heights. As president, I encourage you to learn more about Tennessee Tech. We transform lives every day. Tech is Tennessee. Our visits with Tennessee Tech continues. Dwayne Alexander, the head coach of the Golden Eagles, now beginning his second season in Cookville. But you're no stranger to Cookville in the Upper Cumberland. No, no, I, I tell everybody I'm kind of like that old piece of furniture you put out on the road, hope somebody will pick it up. And nobody does. They just move you back in, back into the Okay, house. so <laughs> Mark Wilson didn't pick that furniture. I'm, exactly, I'm a little confused. Move me back in. That's exactly <laughs> right. But, no, you know, I played there in the, in the 1980s, and then I was an assistant coach there three different times mm -hmm. uh, before I came back as the head football coach. So, really, starting back to 1983, I've been a part of Tennessee Tech football, some part of about every decade since then. Yeah, we kind of got pinched last year with time, and I apologize for that. But I did want to kind of get the story of moving east 
from Lebanon to Cookville. Kind of fill in the blanks there for us. Well, you know, I was the uh, head coach at Cumberland University for uh, seven seasons and actually had gone to the state championship games when I was at, at Cumberland to uh, recruit. And I was sitting at the game with Watson Brown. And, uh, I've heard of I've him known before. Why, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people have. I uh, <laughs> always tease Watson. You know, he spoke at my high school football banquet. He makes him mad because it makes him feel old. But uh, uh, back in the early Was 80s, that Vanderbilt Watson Brown, Vanderbilt. Austin P. Watson Vanderbilt Brown, Watson. Cincinnati Watson Brown, that was UAB? Vanderbilt Watson Brown. Okay. That was right. early, sure early 1980s early when he was the offense coordinator for George McIntyre. That's he exactly came right. out and spoke at our uh, football banquet at Bluegrass uh, exactly right. Country Club. So I, I've known Coach Brown. Uh, so I was sitting with him at the state championship games and uh, – the game was over on Saturday. On a Monday, he calls me and uh, says, hey, you wouldn't be interested in coming back to your alma mater, would you? And I said, well, I don't know. I might. I uh, certainly love the place. And so we got to talking. They had offensive line position open. And so I went back and served as Watson Brown's uh, offensive line coach, assistant head coach for, for three seasons. And then whenever he retired, uh, I was named the interim head coach. And that's kind of how it, kind of it all happened. So what's Watson and this radio gig all about? What's, what's, what's the story on I that? Mean, well, uh, there's nobody. Of course, he and uh, you know, the, you know, George, go, back and George go way, way back and <laughs> known each other from their Vanderbilt days. And, and, and Watson's a natural to talk about yes. college football and, and Middle Tennessee area, that kind of thing. He knows the high school ranks and the college ranks uh, very, very well. And he, he would be a natural at doing that. It would do awesome. You know, it's easy to ask this question because you've been around the game a long time. But have you ever experienced as difficult a season as you did? last it was tough and it was tough from a lot of ways it's tough I mean knew coming in that there was going to be a transition I mean knew that uh, I had taken over my previous two head coaching jobs I'd taken over programs that experienced you know one win or winless season so you know what that's going to look like now it doesn't make it any easier when you have to go through it but I, I did understood the challenge that we were going to face what made it hurt a little bit more is the fact that it is my alma mater it's a place that you love so much and you know you hurt not only for um, you know, just from losing the games, but you hurt for the alumni, you hurt for the university. We have such a great university. We have such a proud alumni base. We've won 10 OVC championships in our 98 years mm -hmm. of football. So there's a proud history at Tennessee Tech. And to see the program, you know, on a downturn, you know, you really feel a, a personal, um, you know, challenge to get that turned around. It makes it hurt just a little bit more, but it was a tough season. But you know, we do see light at the end of the tunnel, and we're continuing to work. You kind of winked at me last year. We sat in this spot. Is it? I got a quarterback. I just gotta, <laughs> just gotta get him there. Right. Uh, and I felt like last season one of the important things was, is frankly, to keep him upright. That's right. I know he missed the last game of the season. That's and, right. And as he mentioned, that was precautionary, and that was That's right. that was documented as such. Right. But you got to be excited about Bailey Fisher. Well, we are. Just not only the, the football player that he is, uh, but the type of young man that he is, the type of leader that he is. I mean, the, he's got that. That it factor, and to me, you really need that at the quarterback position. You know, the besides going out when you're out recruiting quarterbacks, you know, you're not just looking for guys that can run and throw and do all those things, but you're looking for those, that moxie, so to speak. You know, that gamesmanship, that leadership that it takes, and he's got all of those. And he really reminds me a lot of our offense coordinator and our quarterback Trey Lamb. There's a ton of similarities there. Grew up in a football family, you know, grew up around football. Uh, um, you know, Bailey's high school coach, it's you know, tough uh, up the, here. The, very tough minded and that type of thing. So, uh, you know, that, that he had a tremendous first year again, had to miss the last game and a half, you know, uh, due to injuries. But he, he got a lot of experience and is much better. I mean, he's had a whole spring, you know, under his belt, a whole summer. We'll have a whole fall camp and we're excited about what he's going to do. It's kind of a follow up question. But what did you learn going through last season that you thought you had a grip on? After all those years of coaching, what, what, what surprised you? What kind of jumped out at you? Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know if there was one thing that surprised me, but, you know, again, last year was my 30th year coaching football, you know, and I'd been a head football coach at, at numerous other places. And, um, you know, I, I don't call it your first year. It's really almost a zero year. I was talking to Kim Rosemont, our basketball coach, who went through a similar wow. thing. Very, she was in her Great analogy. Year. Yeah. You know, it's, it's that first year, you're just, it's a transition and evaluation. You're trying to figure out what you have, who you have. Uh, you know, what we went in spring practice, didn't even know who was at what position or what players that we had. So that first year is such a transition and evaluation of every area of your program where you're able to sit down. And I was able to sit down at the end of the season and go, okay, here's where we're really at. You know, here's what I opened a couple of folders. I wasn't sure where we were at. Now I know where we're at. You know, here's what we've got. Here's what we're dealing with. Now let's go get it fixed. Let's go get it done from recruiting to developing our players, current players that we have, relationships with our players. And, and I couldn't be more pleased uh, with, with where we're at in that area. All right, okay. So what does 2019 hold for you? 
uh, 20, it'll be an exciting year. Uh, we've got an interesting uh, team makeup. We've got 16, 17 seniors on our team that are quality young men that have hung in there. And then uh, we've got true freshmen, uh, true sophomores, you know, or redshirt freshmen, you know. So uh, we're either going to have a senior playing in a lot of positions or he's going to be backed up by a freshman. And we're going to still have a lot of freshmen that are that are playing on our football team, you know, and a lot of true sophomores, but that's exciting. Uh, they're talented. Uh, we've got to continue to string recruiting classes, you know, together. But, you know, our goal, uh, Bob, is just to get um, get better. It's a daily thing. It's daily to get better. From my side of the house, it's fair to say your schedule's a little easier this year than it was, particularly pre, pre-conference. pre Well, last year was wow. awfully tough. I mean, you know, we opened up at Chattanooga, then had to go to Utah State, who ended up winning 11 games, you know, an FBS in mm. a bowl game, and then uh, had Kennesaw State at home. You know, that was a tough road to go. And then had Jacksonville State on the road. So it was a tough uh, tough schedule this year. You know, it has uh, balanced out a little bit, you know, and, uh, you know, we're, we're excited about that. We actually get to open up at home, which we're excited about. Yeah, I, I, running in the freshman, too. Yeah, yeah. Make sure, make sure we have a set. That's exactly and right. Plus, that first three book in it by terrible weather games, the delay at Chattanooga, Chattanooga we went and out then at, a Kennesaw State delay right. as well. We went out at uh, 1230 um, in the morning, you know, to play at uh, Chattanooga. Then Kennesaw, we didn't kick off until – we spent a lot of time. We practiced being in the locker room a lot. I know that dressed up in our uniforms. <laughs> Glad it was Labor Day week. You know, That's, the exactly right. one. That's exactly Dwayne right. Dwayne Alexander, our thanks for joining us, uh, head coach at Tennessee Tech. So that leaves one. Can tell Williams from Austin B. Mark Hudspeth from Austin B. Coming up next, OVC Media Day continues from Nashville. A smile, such a simple gesture. An effortless contraction of muscles, a flash of teeth. Healthy smiles have the power to spread joy, courage, and love. When you smile, it transforms you and the world around you. So if you feel the urge, go ahead and use that simple gesture to spread joy. Keep your smile healthy and strong. Choose Delta Dental, protecting more smiles than anyone. We'll start with explosive and fun. That's Kentel Williams, Austin V. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome to this. Pick that mic up a little bit. Let's <laughs> yes, talk a little bit. Last season, uh, a season of high expectations. Right. After coming off a fabulous 2017 season, That's didn't sad. quite get there. How did it feel? Um, I mean, it was more so of like a letdown to some of the players because all the work we was putting in and for all the hype we had built up behind us and for us to let some of our fans and some of our supporters down, it was kind of like a numbing feeling to ourselves, so like a sickening feeling. So, I mean, just now we just know we got to bounce back and get back to it. In your mind, was it the little things? I mean, because you lost some really, really close games right. at home. I mean, East, the right. Eastern Kentucky game kind of sticks out to me. Mm -hmm. I felt like you had Jacksonville State square for about three quarters. Yes, was it, in your backwards evaluation, was it the little things that didn't work out for you, or was it a big gaping thing that maybe – it's kind of covered up. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. It was probably the little things. It was more so about how we finish a game. Like, I mean, it's always you always have to come in, with, come out with a complete game, be able to start and finish, and we just couldn't finish strong at the time. All right, offensively, we got to score some more. I mean, obviously, we got to score more points. That's <laughs> right. really easy. It's fun stuff we talk about at VD days. Yeah, I got to score more points. Talk a little bit about your role in that. Um, for me personally, it's just doing whatever I can to help my team get the win because, I mean, individual stats going to come as long as these players doing what they're supposed to do and under assignment and alignment and just coming in and competing. Okay, Jeremiah Oatesfall, he's, he's, he's key to your success. <laughs> You've got to come in now, three-year starter. Started as a true freshman. Right. Um, there's there's competition last season, a little bit back and forth, kind of got settled back in. Right. How to talk a little bit about that relationship you guys have? Uh, man, have, man has relationship good. Sometimes during the play, we have a little side conversation about what we need to do. I mean, Throw me the ball? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> okay. Conversations like that. So when sometimes it's just when one of us needs help, we can always lean on each other and be able to pick on each other's game and explain to each other what we see from his perspective and from my perspective, see how the defense is moving, defense is adjusting. So, I mean, our connection is pretty good. We do a lot of communicating on and off the field. Okay, so I have the pleasure of living in Clarksville, so I live not far from you. What interests you in Austin P? What was your what was the decision you made to I, go to school? 
I made the decision because I like the environment. I like coming down because coming from Knoxville, it's always like a bunch of big time UT fans, a lot of loud, noisy. It's always just something going on. So I came down here because I feel like it was just a good way for me to get away from home. Like I'm not too far away from home, but I'm still home, but I'm not home, if that makes sense. Sure. So it was just it was just the common environment, the fans being behind us, it's just starting something new. Like I could see the progress. All right, new coaching staff. Talk a little bit about what that transition is like. Uh, been difficult for you, mm-hmm. pick up some new things. Oh, I thought they would do X kind of situation. Yeah. Um, it's not. It's not never going to be easy going through a coaching change, especially when you came in with the coaches that's also leaving you. And so, I mean, the coaches change has been it's been real tough on some players, but it's also been helpful because more players are willing to put in the work, more players are willing to buy in to the to the culture and the new standard that we're setting. So, what does it feel like as an offense? Is the offense similar, with a twist or two? Uh, it's it's a little bit it's a little bit similar. A lot of it's probably still the same but as far as like our tempo and how we approach the approach our drills our practices and the weight room and everything that's a lot it's a big difference so i know you talk about it as as, as players you know the media we like to put out this free season poll right. and, and you know <laughs> you know either make you mad or <laughs> think you're better than you are or what however right. it shakes out right do you as players pay any attention to that? Because this is a team that's picked right in the middle of the pack in the conference, mm-hmm. and I I kind of think that's fair. What, 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 what mm-hmm. if at all, do you talk about as players? Um, I mean, sometimes when we see them, it's either some people taking that as motivation and some people just don't worry about it because at the end of the day, as long as we come out and compete, we can compete with anybody in this league, and, that's a, and we're firm believers of that. Okay, so how many touchdowns do you need to score this season? I'm just doing what I can do to set, to help my team win. I really don't have. Do you have? Do you have a share? Do you have a number in your head? Like I gotta do this to get us there. Um, I mean, that's no exact number, but I mean, I would like to score at least two times a game. So, okay. I mean, I'm gonna come in and do what I do, do the best I can to help my team win. So get us 22 or 24. <laughs> I forget. You got 11 or 12. I forget how many you got. On Somewhere that. in there. Toughest opponent you've played so far in a conference? My toughest opponent would probably be, I say UT Martin, because their their defense was was good. It was a nice, solid defense. Their linebackers were active. Their their really their entire box is active. Their DBs are active. They just have an active defense, but. I mean, it's also how you prep for the game and how you approach the game as well. And that's a game you probably, looking back on the last season, would like to have back, the one you played in the rain in Martin. Yes, sir. Yeah, that was a major game I would love to have back because it's just we didn't have the mindset to come in and compete. We were worried about other things rather than a football game. Did it feel like every time last season your team got a little bit of traction, Mm -hmm. something happened and stopped you? Yeah. You kind of feel that way. You just never got that right. momentum you needed. Yeah, it, that goes to the finishing perspective because, I mean, we can come out strong or we'll start out slow, and it's just all about how we finish the game versus us getting onto, each, onto ourselves and fighting and arguing with each other, which is really toxic for a team. But as long as we all come together and stay strong, then we'll, we'll finish pretty good. All right, we've got to wrap it up, but I've asked everybody this question, the student athletes. For us to be to be successful this season, we must finish the sentence. Buy in, compete, uh, <laughs> really finish. And finish I would strong. and I would guess a big part of that happens in the next few weeks when everybody gets back on campus. Yes, sir. All right, <laughs> let the buy in begin. Hey, we're going to talk to the guy that needs a lot of buy in from this group. Can tell <laughs> Williams joining us, Mark Hudspeth, head football coach, Austin P. Our final guest from OVC Media Day.
Well, the Murray State folks can get upset with me. I thought Coach Hudspeth was last, but I was incorrect. So Murray State coming up. Mark Hudspeth, welcome to OVC Media Day. Hey, thank you. Glad, glad to be here. 12 months ago, did you think you'd be in this very spot? You know, the coaching business is it's a pretty, pretty funny business. And, you know, I'm, I'm recruiting away at Mississippi State uh, right after the season. And I um, get, get a call from Gerald. And, uh, and 24 hours later, I'm the head coach at Austin P. So it sort of happened really fast, but I could not be more excited to be here. Yeah, it was a quick piece between that Sunday and, like you said, about 20, about that Tuesday or so. Yep. It really transpired quickly. And did you come out of the field or did – Y'all met somewhere, I believe. You picked a secret meeting spot yeah. as you to fly in. Gerald flew in. Whatever, yeah. however it worked out, it worked out, right? Right, it did. It, it was kind of quick and fast, that's for sure. Okay, so give me the Gerald Harrison sales pitch. Well, Warren, he, and Austin yeah, he can make a lot of money selling cars, let me tell you, because he's, <laughs> he's a great salesman. But also, you know, he's passionate, and that's what sold me. He's passionate about uh, college athletics, passionate about uh, wanting to win and build a winning culture. Uh, he's passionate about Austin P athletics and Austin P football in Clarksville, and so it was pretty easy to see that in his in his mannerisms and hear that in his voice. And I wanted to be on his team. This has been uh, one of numerous stops for you, but you're no stranger to being a head coach. So kind of take us through the Mark Hudspeth career to well, this point. You know, as you, as you know, uh, you you got to pay your dues early in the coaching career. So moved a lot early as a young coach. Um, and then I obviously got my head coaching start after I left the Naval Academy and went to North Alabama for seven years. Left there for two years ago with Dan Mullen in Mississippi State before taking the head job at Louisiana Lafayette, which is now the University of Louisiana. That's they refer to it in that and, part of the uh, world, yep. Yep, and was there seven years. And we had the great privilege of going to five bowl games, winning four out of the five bowl games there, and then taking the job at Mississippi State this past year. And then getting the call from Gerald uh, to, to come to Austin P. Really glad to be here. So what was the Joe Moorhead sales pitch like to get you to Mississippi State? Well, you know, uh, I, that's another coach that I have a lot of uh, respect for. He's done a great job there. And uh, I was very appreciative for that opportunity. And, I, you know, being from Mississippi, he wanted some Mississippi recruiting ties. And I was uh, able to help him there. And, uh, and uh, he's going to do an exceptional job there at Mississippi State. So you're no stranger to this region of the country. What is the perception of this conference with your peers? Well, I think this conference has gained a lot of respect in the last few years. And I think this conference is highly competitive. Uh, you know, Jacksonville State has sort of, sort of been the bell cow. And, but I think everybody's closing the gap. And, uh, you know, that has a lot to do with, uh, to me, the school administrations across this conference making a bigger commitment to football and bringing kids in for summer school, paying for summer school, facility upgrades, you know, in the arm race. And, and uh, I know that our, our administration, our president and our athletic director have a great vision. Dr. White and Gerald Harrison have a great vision for Austin P Athletics. If you see some of the facilities on our campus that they have built and what they're doing for our student athletes, you're definitely going to see that they're making a, uh, a big difference. Okay, so I've stayed away from cliches at this point, yep. but inheriting this program, the cupboard is not bare. You know, we've got some good players returning. There's some player, there's some positions uh, that were hit hard through graduation. We've had to rebuild, but also when you have your starting quarterback coming back, that's always a plus. Uh, when you have a player that led the nation in yards per carry and can tell, that's a plus. And so, and then we've got some defensive players like Juan Bryant that's here today that to have a lot of playing time. So uh, we're going to uh, recruit and fill those needs. And then we have a lot of good players returning, and we expect to be highly competitive. So if I were to look at a Mark Hudspeth team, what am I going to see? Let's talk about your philosophy. Well, I want to. I hope you're going to see a physical, tough, disciplined football team. We want to be a tough team. We want to be physical. We want to be able to run the football. And obviously, we want to be able to pass the football, too. Uh, we want to be balanced. But we want to be tough, physical. And I think you've got to be tough at the point of attack in the trenches in college football still to this day, winning games up front. Okay, so despite the fact that you're familiar regionally with this university, this conference, 
Who's taken you aside and said, this is the game you really got to be concerned about? Have you had that conversation well, with someone? What, what's, so, what's so crazy is I've had a lot of different people tell me different games. <laughs> and and so what I'm trying to tell them, hey, the only game on our schedule right now is North Carolina Central. Yeah. And that's the first game. Tom so Oker. that's yep. the only game on our schedule. After that game, we'll worry about game two. Okay, so no, no one in particular – Game on. No wood. All yeah, right. All game, right. Game I tried one. to yeah, get it out yeah. of. Uh, I tried yeah. to. Welcome, welcome to the OVC. This is a. This is the fun league. We're partial. We're prejudiced to it. Yeah. Those of us that have had the pleasure of working in it for a long time, I think you're going to do just well. I'm looking forward to meeting you, and uh, we'll see the governors a couple times. Great. This season on ESPN three. So. Thanks for having Thanks. us. Excited to be here. Yeah, Mark Husband. He, go ahead with the last phrase you're supposed to always say. Hey, let's go P. Hey, let's go P. Right. Back after this, Murray State coming up next. Hey, Dad, got a quarter? Sure. I see an unstable skateboard and a long, long recovery. Helmet? You are one expensive kid. I'm next. Wait, I see a lady. Lady? Wearing a red coat. You can't predict the future, but you can prepare for it. With affordable individual and family plans, call Farm Bureau Health Plans. We've got you covered. Last season, uh, this player's head football coach did his best, Matthew McConaughey from We Are Marshall, and just called him Sap. So James Sapping did George's. us. Hey, welcome to the set. Yeah, thanks for having me. Hey, uh, so Murray State for the next couple of minutes. Uh, so we do have permission to call you Sap, right? Yeah, right on. Did Coach coin that, or has that been with you for a while? That's been with you for a while. All right, it's probably pretty easy to figure that one out. Yeah. Hey, great season last season. <laughs> So top it and do more, right? That's right. That's the goal, right? Yeah, I got to carry with the So moment. how easy is that, though? Yeah, that's that's what we've been doing all off season, putting in the work and kind of seeing we didn't finish up where we wanted to last year. We had a better year than before. But, you know, that's kind of what makes a good team go to a great team is continuing what you've done before and not settling. You know, it's kind of interesting because the last two schools we're going to visit with are the uh, – perceived basketball schools mm -hmm. from times past, Austin yeah. Peay and Murray State. And both of the respective football teams at those schools have kind of changed that mindset mm -hmm. of just a general public. Do you feel like that's happening as well? Yeah, so since my freshman year, the whole process has been changing the culture of what it is in the stadium. And so, right, when you have John Morant, like, there's, there's very good reason for basketball to be – You can emphasize you, that a little you bit. You can yeah. emphasize yeah. that. It's understandable. <laughs> but football last year really – Took on, took on center stage in the fall, and people were excited about it, and that led straight into basketball. But, yeah, things are changing, and we're really excited to be a part of it. So last season, ups and downs, but overall one loss record, much better than 17. But I want to talk through a couple spots through the season. You guys look like you had momentum, had momentum, and you went to Tech, and you lost. Yeah. That's painful. I can see yeah, that. It's, it's very painful, very disappointing, and something you remember. It's like we lost focus is really what it came down to. You know, in the first three quarters, we didn't show up, and then the fourth one, by that time, it was too late to come back. But we were trying. It's like, yeah, we had it, we had it the whole time. We could have done it, but, right, we lost focus. And Tennessee Tech came out and played pretty well, but we had, we had, to, we had to bring better focus uh, throughout the week prior to it. So, so flash forward a couple weeks. OVC game of the week. Kevin Ingram, who's there's Kevin, Kevin's around here somewhere, had a call. Goes Sports Center top ten. Yeah, crazy game. Mm. You were getting your doors blowing off. Yeah, by Simo, thirty-one nothing. I believe one point, at least twenty-four nothing. It was thirty-one nothing okay, at one right. point, right before half. <laughs> you guys actually. come back. It's like crazy game. Then you let them back in the game, and then you get the great kickoff return. That, that that brings a great smile yeah, to your it face. Does, but it does. It's like five games in one. It was. It, at halftime, I go in the locker room and I remember looking at my my buddy Silas Owens. I we both play the same position. I look at him. We look at each other like we got nothing to lose. Just go out there and play. And so I think that was what Coach kind of reiterated in the locker room. Also, is hey, we got this game. We've got to get back into it. Mm -hmm. Just keep working. And so we did throughout the whole game. And then yeah, kick, the kickoff returned. Emotional roller coaster, but we ended up on top. So that was that was a lot of fun. Okay, so let's talk about your role in 2019 on this Murray State team. Yeah, kind of define kind of where you are as a leader. You're here today for a reason. So mm -hmm. kind of define that for us a little bit. 
Yeah. Well, so actually we had a team vote on who we wanted to come out here and represent the offense and the defense. And so the offense voted me. Um, I was actually a kicker like two, last year prior to the last season. So you, you, you kick, pick, yep. pick the kicker to come yep. in and talk X's and O's. But yeah, so anyway, it was, it's been a really good offseason for us. And I've really enjoyed just getting to have a leadership role and whatever that looks like is just being there and setting an example. So so did you two get picked ahead of Coach Stewart or did we have to bring him regardless? How did that play He out? was driving. He was driving today. So <laughs> we we really – we needed him. We okay. needed him to pay for the gas, really. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> watch out, NCAA, with that. Couple no, of things. Yeah. Couple of things about this upcoming season. There are high expectations for this Murray State team. Are you comfortable with that? Oh, absolutely. And as far as expectations go, it's really what we have inside the locker room. Those are the expectations that we pay more attention to than anything outside of it. Because somebody's going to say, "Oh, you'll have a great season." Oh, you'll have an awful season. That doesn't matter. We're more focused about what we want for Murray State football and what we've been trying to develop, especially as a senior class, and it's trickled on down junior, sophomores, and freshmen. And so we're really excited. We know what we want, and so we're, we're working every day to get, get to that goal. Looking forward to it as well. Thank you yeah. for joining us. We appreciate it. Coach Mitch Stewart up next. Our thanks to Sap, James Sabathian. And that is a great story. Uh, it's, a good, it's too good looking for a kicker. we got to get him back into the, some of that offensive mode. All right? <laughs> right. I, I appreciate that. Wow. <laughs> All right. So we're going to have next Mitch Stewart. Stewart, and they're naming stadiums after him. We ask him about it every year. Back after this, Murray State continues at OVC Media Day. You have dreams. We'll help you make them happen. At Murray State University, we've earned our reputation for excellence. We offer the best of both worlds, state-of-the-art facilities paired with small class sizes and faculty dedicated to your success. You'll gain hands-on experiences, that take your education beyond textbooks and lecture halls. And with 126 academic program offerings, you'll find endless opportunities here. This is where your future begins. Apply today. Murray State's Mitch Stewart joins us as we wrap up OVC Media Day in Nashville. Coach, I said we're the only thing between lunch and the commissioner's address, so we might Short want to be, we might want to be pretty <laughs> cool with that. Okay, so last season you and I sat about this same spot. Yeah. Might have been against that wall, but we sat right there. Uh, you're in a contract year. There's a lot. There's a lot going on. Yeah, yeah. And a great season you followed up with. So kind of talk, take us through that. Well, it was it was a uh, it was a good season. It was a step in the right direction. Um, and uh, and obviously it was it was. Um, like you said, it was one of those seasons where it was do or die time. And, um, and I'm going to tell you, the thing that I realized when you get into a, a spot like that, um, in football terms, you know, you got your back against the wall, sure. right? Um, best thing that you can do is get as tight as you can with the people around you. And that's what we did from a coaching staff standpoint, from a player standpoint. Um, I really just um, – gave everything up to them and I invited them every decision making um uh, situation that came up hey guys what do you think what do you want to do um and it was uh it was really cool because that was different from me you know that was different Change. from me it was it was kind of hey I'm I'm the head man I'll tell you what to do and and also when I figured out hey we're all in this thing together let's let's let everybody have some ownership and I kind of opened everything up uh, to the team, it changed me completely. You know, I was talking to Sap a little bit. You did endure a lot of ups and downs. Mm -hmm. I mean, net net, winning season, great rebound kind of situation. Yeah. But there just seemed points in time in the season where you guys, they got it going on. Oh, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. That's just part of it. I know, but that had to be there is, frustrating. and 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 it is frustrating because it, it, now the the deal is 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 we had really two instances that we felt like. We let slip away, and we talk about the. There's the pain of discipline, and then there's the pain of regret. And after those two situations, we got on the bus, and there was a lot of regretful faces uh, because you just you knew that you let an opportunity pass you by. Um, now, the great thing about that is, is there's two ways to to um, that that you can kind of use those situations. You can let them define you, or you can let them develop you. And that's the biggest thing that we've done after those after those. Uh, two situations and going into the off season is we've really tried to use those to develop this football team further. Talk about your recruiting. Uh, it certainly has to pick up. I know you can't talk in specific terms, yeah. but has to pick up a little bit more interest. And let, let's be real. Murray State, 
with the basketball program yeah. where it is. Yeah. It has to help you on the football side. Oh, absolutely. I tell you that, you know, it's so funny when you go down to South Florida, right? And you and you and you go into a high school and you don't know uh, maybe it's the first time you've gone to that high school and really branched out, and you go to that high school coach or you go to that prospect. You don't know him from Adam's house cat, but he comes up to you and goes, "Oh yeah, Ja," and you're like, "Oh, now we're going," you know. But the and, conversation, but it, yeah, and it, but it, yeah. that's what it does is it sure. gives you um, something that both of you know, and you can and you can start the conversation like that, and then all of a sudden you start to, to introduce them to how just what a great place Murray State is. Um, and it, it's been tremendous for us. I tell Matt, he's my neighbor. Uh, Coach McMahon is my neighbor. I tell him all the time. I say, hey, at some point, y'all going to have to get some royalties from me or something because I use him and Jaw in the basketball program all the time in recruiting. That's a pretty neat neighborhood. I'll have to, yeah. I'll have to, I'll have to visit <laughs> that sometime. So tell us the story again. I, I, I hate to really go back in the archives. Mm -hmm. You and your wife on date night at Cracker Barrel and you're looking across the stadium last year. Yep. You related to this. I want to hear that one more time. Yeah, so we were we was supposed to be date night and, and we were sitting over there and where we were at you could see the field. And um you know, I'm I'm supposed to be giving her my undivided attention, but However, I just can't help it when you see, you know, all your boys over there working. I keep turning, I keep turning. Finally she's being the the great woman she is, she looks at me, she goes, Hey, do you want to get this to go? And we can go over there and watch them. And I said, uh, no, I said, that's illegal. I said, but I tell you what, if you could just turn, I'm going to, I'm going to turn so that I can see out the window so I can look at you and I can watch across the through. street, yeah, across you. the yeah, street. That's right. About, yeah. And uh, but she was awesome. Street, yeah. yeah. She was awesome. That was a, that was the best date night I've ever had. Okay. To be honest with you. So take us to the SEMO game. Okay. That was one of the – I mean, Kevin and I had a pleasure calling that last – that was one of the craziest games I've ever been a part of. Uh, I me mean, too. like we're talking to the SAP, you get your doors blown off, first yeah. half, you come back, you give up the lead late again, yeah. and then the kickoff return. Yeah, so a couple of things with that. Um, the, the first half, like you said, um, what was – and I never do this. Um, we go down there, and right before halftime, you know, we scored. And it just went – for whatever reason, I looked up at the, at, the, at the video board, and you know how they run those in-game stats. And I looked up and I realized we were winning just about every statistical, statistical category, category yeah. other than turnovers. Great. And that was that was what led me into the half. I, I finally realized, man, I have to, all I got to tell the boys is, is, hey, we're playing good. I looked at Drew Anderson, our quarterback, and I said, just stop turning the ball over and we'll be fine. And that was literally our – everybody wanted to know, hey, what did you tell them at halftime? You know, they thought we had some like yeah, Vince Lombardi speech. And it was sure. literally, hey, keep playing like you're playing just stop turning the ball over and um and then so we we battle back and forth and like you said we get the lead late and then we lose it right again. i mean they go on a tremendous drive and just cut through us uh, in a span of like a minute and 20 and we've got x amount of seconds left and uh what nobody realizes is is uh honeycutt who returned the kickoff was not even supposed to be on the field he's not the returner but for whatever reason, when we're on the sideline, he just goes up to the returner and says, hey, I got this. And I really didn't even realize it until after the game on Sunday, me and Coach Suber are watching, and it's his team. And, and Suber kind of leans over. He goes, Coach, you know that wasn't supposed to be Honeycutt running the ball. And uh, just – how about that? Just kind of turned out that way, you know. So I, I gave Honeycutt an extra high five for that one. <laughs> one of the wild games, and I, I'm, I'm grateful for both teams that ended up being a sports center top 10 highlight, yeah, which is really a lot of fun and i'm grateful selfishly i'll say that i'm grateful i didn't step over kevin let kevin make the call <laughs> i could have bought set up just as, just as easily maybe yeah. so when we had the graphics <clears throat> earlier special teams all preseason selection top to bottom there's a murray state logo to the left yeah that's got to be pretty interesting yeah it is we've been very very blessed uh very fortunate we've got um you know, our punter and our kicker, two tremendous weapons for us. And then, obviously, Honeycutt, who, again, we didn't find out until the latter part of the season what he could do. Um, but uh, very, very fortunate, very blessed. I was telling somebody earlier, you know, there used to be a coach that coached at Murray State back in the day by the name of Frank Beamer. Yeah, I've heard of him. Um, and he kind of coined the phrase Beamer Ball. And we've kind of taken that, and, and we call it Racer Ball. So everything that when we meet, we, we have Racer Ball meetings um, and all of our teams, you know, we're, we're, they're racer ball teams. And uh, Coach Omley, our special teams coordinator, he does a tremendous job. We put a lot of emphasis on special teams um, during our meetings and the way we practice. And, and um, so uh, it's – but having those three guys is quite a weapon for us. Aside from a normal twist or two that kind of must do in terms of coaching, mm -hmm. coming off of last season's success, do you change a lot? 
you, we, you always, you always reevaluate. You always look and see. Um, the biggest thing I think what you have to do is you have to find out what you don't do well, um, and you have to attack that. You don't hide from it. You don't, you don't try not to do it as much. You go attack it and make it better. And that's what we've tried to do is figure out what our strengths are, continue to strengthen those, figure out what we don't do so well, and go attack that. And we hadn't talked a lot of X's and O's, but uh, your quarterback situation. Yeah, we've got, uh, we've got a guy who's been in the program for three years now, Preston Rice. He'll be the starting guy. He's a, he's a Mike linebacker in a quarterback's body. And uh, the whole team, the biggest thing is the whole team just loves him. And as you and I have talked about, he's got a really good pedigree. Man, no doubt. <laughs> very yes, much, he does. Very much so with that yes, as well. Yes, he does. Uh, defensively, what should we look for this season? Um, well, you know, our linebacker core is is probably the, the heart soul of our defense right now. We feel really good there. Um, we made a lot of uh, – Made a lot of strides in recruiting uh, on the defensive front. We've got 19 defensive linemen on our roster, um, and I think it's going to be kind of uh, by committee. I think we're just going to try to keep fresh bodies and, and let those guys go play. Um, and then we've got some guys that uh, on the back end that we think um, uh, can, can handle um, difficult situations, whether that be man coverage, whether that be some blitz packages and things like that. So really like where we're at over there on that side of the football. All right, and, of course, we've answered a special teams question, which is really, really – give me a – the punter, uh, named Steve Dawson, the all, the all the, the place kicker. Yeah, uh, 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 Gabe Facente. Give me a, a, one of his great stories because I think you <laughs> shared one with me. I, I, I got it mixed up. I apologize, but you shared one with, oh, he's, with, with uh, me last year. Yeah, so Gabe, Gabe's a, a Miami guy, and um, so uh, I give you a quick one. I uh, I go down to Fort Lauderdale for vacation about a week ago, and while I'm down there, I was going to go try to see his parents while I was down there, and I couldn't. But I, I texted him. I said, "Hey." The girls are beached out. They kind of want to go window shopping, you know, whatever. We want to do some things. Where's the best place to go? And he sends me a place back. He says, you won't regret it. It'd be the best thing you ever did. I said, okay. So we drive down there, and we're driving from Fort, La Fort Lauderdale to Miami. <clears throat> and uh, we go to this place. We pull up to this place, and I'm looking around. I cannot afford one thing at this place. I text him back. I'm like, what? Who do you think I am? <laughs> and he goes, did you love it? Did you love it? And I said, man, because uh, I tell you, he, uh, his family are great people and uh, in the flower business. And apparently flower business is booming right now because uh, where he sent me, that's all we did was win the shop. We didn't go in any stores. <laughs> Maybe we should change our philosophy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I enjoyed, I enjoyed meeting him and joining Enjoyed that working with him last season. Yeah. Best of luck to you. This is going to be uh, truly an interesting season for you. Yeah. You folks are picked in the middle of the pack. Uh, you've got expectations. That mm -hmm. The media who know very little, they kind of put some things out there to get, get us talking sure. and have us have this event. Uh, I just feel like you're kind of positioned really to move forward from last season. We, we believe and that's so. That's where you want to be, right? Yeah, yeah we believe so. And, and we don't put a lot of stock into the preseason positions. Um, just as as James said, um, because we just we focus solely on us, and uh, but we believe in ourselves, and and I believe in these kids and what they're doing. Yeah, they're not a basketball school anymore, exclusively. Uh, they got some pretty good names and numbers there as well. And I, I learned if you didn't learn anything today, you learned that Matt McCann. Our neighbors. It's, it's quite right. a, a block party. Yeah, I, I, I'll have to hang out with it. You guys <laughs> have got a lot of reason to celebrate. Our thanks to Murray State, James Sappington, Mitch Stewart, and I tease him every season. They name stadiums after him. He plays in Stewart Stadium. We're done. OVC Media Days. It's been a pleasure. Thanks to all the coaches and student athletes that have joined us. And look forward to the beginning of the football season here on ESPN3, September 28th, UT Martin at Eastern Illinois. From Nashville, have a good day.